Hello, uh, welcome back to another episode of Far Off Films, the number one anime podcast in the world. Uh, it is I. I'm 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 uh, Captain Misato from Nerve. Who el- who else is here? Hi, I'm uh, I'm uh, Shinji Akari from, uh, and I need to get in the fucking robot. Why do you, why why? Why would you, pick <laughs> you can you can pick anyone. Um, you well, he pick obviously anyone. picked it for the meme. He obviously picked it for yeah. the meme. So I do everything for the memes and the giggles. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Mhm. Mhm. I and I um uh oh no, what's their name? Um, Ritsuko. N- is it Ritsuko? One Are you talking thing. about the scientist lady? Yeah, yeah Ritsuko. Yeah, Ritsuko. Yeah. 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 Um, from... Or well, maybe I'm Ray because I'm quiet sometimes. But Would you want to be Ray? Anyways, from... Yeah, anyways. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't want to be Ray, actually. No, okay. Do we want... No one wants to be anyone in this show. With this, Keep in mind, this is all just for memes, all right? Like... Okay, I'll name a character. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, I am as, Pen you, Pen. as you as you, yeah, Pen as, Pen, as you can probably hear, uh, yeah, as you can probably hear, we uh we have a guest on, uh, the, today's episodes. Uh, he's the host of uh of the Santi Time podcast that you can check out on Spotify, and uh, yeah, and just an all around great film critic person uh santi hey <laughs> introduce yourself hey. hello yeah. hello i am santi buadib trady atreides duke of arrakis how's everyone doing oh god <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> okay we don't bring up mid movies on the podcast yeah exactly like, hey um, don't call do part two mid do not ever do that <laughs> i know that you're from australia man <laughs> or is it luca i don't know so, Luke is from I, South Africa. Jules is from I'm, Australia. I'm from Australia. <laughs> and I'm the one who thinks yeah. it's mid. And I've seen it. And I also do, and I haven't seen it. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm so dune pilled that I kind of get angry that people call it mid. You know, so just, so just forgive me on that. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, uh, really, uh, so, uh, so uh, good to be here, guys. Really, you know. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, yeah, I I'm glad you're finally on the pod. I've been on your podcast like what, like twice, I think. Yes, Santi, yeah. So I figured, you know, I really got to repay the debt at some point. So here it is. Here's me repaying the debt. So yeah, yeah. Introduce yourself, yeah. man. Uh, what do you do? Uh, and uh, and stuff. Uh, sure. Yeah. So. So, uh, so on Santi Time, um, um, it's, not, it's mainly a pop culture podcast where I, where I bring on, uh, friends and people that I meet online to talk about topical stuff. And, and right now it's like transitioning into a film podcast because, because now mainly I'm just talking about movies and, and like, and like critically acclaimed you know shows because like originally it was going to be because originally it was going to be a podcast talking about franchise media but then but then like after 2021 like i wanted to like branch into like (laughs) branch into like talking about actual movies mainly mainly i've been inspired by house of cinema to do that so (laughs) yeah and uh and yeah, uh, I'm pretty big on Letterbox. Yeah, I'm pretty big on Letterbox. I have, I currently have like a thousand and nine hundred and thirty followers right now. So, um, so the goal this year is to reach two K, and no uh, that's pretty close right now. So I'm excited. Jesus, that is just like a massive flex that you're just casually like dropping mm-hmm. yeah. on all of us. I feel like that's an anti flag. I don't know. Yeah. That's just me. One one thousand followers on Letterbox. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like the key 
yeah, yeah, yeah. The key to gain more followers is to is to review movies more and to uh, man. I wish I could have more advice on that. Like actual advice on this, but it just happened, you know. Like I started the to thing, think. The thing you gotta, the thing you gotta do is you just gotta, you just gotta put the best jokes into your reviews. Like, like for instance, one of Mean Streets, you could say like the streets sure were mean. Or in that one of Taxi Driver, you could say like he sure drove a taxi. He was a taxi driver. And in Goodfellas, you could say like these guys were some pretty bad fellas and then in the wolf of wall street you could say there was no wolves in this movie and then in the irishman you could say he was he didn't this movie was not set in ireland and then in the bringing out the dead you could say he certainly brought out the dead <laughs> wow, and, then, says, and then in casino you could say yeah. he certainly went to a casino <laughs> and then in the age of innocence you could say he certainly wasn't innocent and then, and then in after hours that movie definitely took place after hours <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Wow, that show was. <laughs> I was improvising all that, that shit. That show was an apocalypse now. Yeah. I certainly called. I certainly called it by its name. <laughs> I just, like, for me, I just kind of, like, I, I just assume that, like, my takes are just so ass and, like, my, yes. my ratings yes. for shit are just normally so yes. low that, like, <laughs> I scare away people anyway to follow me, like, one no, moment I you have. have. you have a weird amount of, like, like, clout on Letterboxd, Timmy, like, I will I wouldn't call it cloud. I do not. I have, like, no, you'll have, like, so many likes, and I'll be like, what the hell, <laughs> like, like... To be fair, like, half of them are just, like, people we all know, you know, and, like, and yeah. and anytime, like, my, my, uh, any of my reviews get attention, it's just purely because of, like, you know, stupid things that you guys mentioned. Like, if, do you guys remember, like, the, um, uh, what, what, uh, what was the, uh, Tom Cruise movie again? Um, Mission Impossible, that was it. Yeah, I remember, like, on Mission Impossible, all of you guys were, like, just posting yeah, that, yeah, like, yeah, on, on my yeah, review for some great. reason, and I was that like, was yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, but that was, like, an inside joke, though, because some people were, like, legitimately concerned for me. They were, like, oh, yeah. like, Timmy, like, ha s oh, gives God. a review, and, like, everyone's, like, you gotta have fun. It's, like, they don't know that this is an inside joke. <laughs> so, yeah. but, yeah, I wouldn't call it, like, clout. Like, I don't get, like, the amount of, like, like say that, like, Santi gets, you know? Like, he's the he's the guy that has clout. He's the king me. Of the Fuck, yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I do. Yes, I'm proud he's of the it. king. As I was saying... I'm glad that you actually have, like, popularity for typing actual reviews. That's not, like, you know, what what Jules mentioned. Speaking of popularity, <laughs> Timmy, can I just can I just mention my experience with Doom Part 2 real quick? I just, I, I, I just want to, like, get this out there. So... All right, sure, fine. So, so basically, after I saw Doom Part 2, it was a masterpiece. I walked out thinking, yeah, this is probably the greatest movie ever made. And and before I went to bed, I tweeted something last night, and I'm pulling it up right now, and it's and, and I basically tweeted literally me coming out of Dune two, thinking about how I've been a part of a cultural moment in history and something that we'll probably never have for another twenty years, and it's a video of Kendall Roy oh, obsession that like walking. I saw that tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I don't think yeah. I gave it a like this. Like Sorry. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so it's Kendall Roy from Succession, like walking with a depressed. Walking out of the theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. walking with a, like a shock. Yeah, yeah. Walking with like a distressed look on his face. He's walking slowly. It was a season three episode. So every, so so every scene from Succession. <laughs> uh, kinda. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And. And the vi and the and I woke up the next day feeling congested. Sorry, like if I sound weird, it's because like I'm battling a cold right now. I'm fine. It's just that, yeah. It's just that. It's just that. I, it's just that I'm a little congested, like everybody is. It's, it's where I'm living in. Yeah, yeah. Where I am, it's still cold. So, and the tweet has now gained over 13,000 likes and 550,000 views. And I'm just Let's like, wait, go. Yeah, I think we should I peek here? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I think you shared that in our uh, group chat or whatever. And yeah, that was very impressive. I don't know. I don't know how you and like a bunch of other people like just get like random like hit tweets it's like that. Like it's it's genuinely impressive. Like, I don't know how the fuck any of you like accomplish shit like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I've been getting replies like, oh, just wait for I, I being mean, like, oh, just wait for Messiah. Calm down. Like, hey, man, like, and they're like, yeah, uh, I don't agree. Yeah, whatever. but that like, one isn't that one isn't coming out for a long while, right? You know, because because I no, think uh, Villeneuve said like Villeneuve, he was going to make like one to some. Yeah, because he mentioned like you know he was going to work on some like I think he's working like a Cleopatra movie or some shit like that. Like I don't. He wants I don't, to make. Ron, I don't he wants really... to make an adaptation of Rendezvous with Rama, which is the um Arthur, which is the Arthur C. Clarke yeah. uh, novel or short story. Oh, which I think okay. Fincher tried to make at some so... point, but then he couldn't because he said the technology wasn't um that he wanted wasn't re available yet wasn't made yet so mm -hmm. yeah i think his like journey just from going from like indie films like enemy and uh prisoners and uh and and sondi to like these massive like big budget blockbusters like good for him like i didn't think they'd hire this weird french canadian to direct one of the biggest movies uh in the world but you know crazier things have happened i guess so they should have made me. They should have made me the director, though. You would adapt it poorly. Did you, uh, yeah. <laughs> nah, I'd adapt it better than Denis Midnerve. Can you at least admit that uh, the second one was better than better than David Lynch's Dune, Jules? Can you at least admit that? Mm, no, David Lynch's Dune is better. Oh. I dick, I dick, I dick ride David Lynch. I'm sorry. This is just a, okay. I'm just a David Lynch fan. Well. Yeah, uh, thank you for sharing your experience, Santi. Uh, what are your favorite movies? Tell us. Yeah, what's your favorite and least favorite? Oh, okay. yeah. What are your favorite and least favorite movie? Favorite, least yeah. favorite movie. Oh man, I really. When people ask me my favorite movie, like it always changes. But uh, I would. You can say... just give like your Letterbox top four if that if that helps, oh, you know, because that's okay. how that's what yeah. a lot of the like guests do. So. Letterbox are my four favorites. Okay, great. Uh, so four favorites. I already have Dune Part Two in there. Um, Oppenheimer. I recently, I recently revisited Soul, and I really loved it. I loved it as much as I did like three years ago. And uh, Wim Wenders Paris Texas. That is okay. quite the top four. Yeah, uh, Vin Vendor's Vin Vendor's Paris, Texas, though is very that is a very good movie. I, that is very base to have that on your top four. Yeah, I would like to watch it at some point because I'm 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 like halfway through a uh, Perfect Days screening uh, screener to the uh, to the film. I saw like half of it and then I was like, "Fuck, I gotta I gotta watch End of Ava at some point." So oh, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah, for uh, yeah, uh, I would say my least favorite is probably. Uh, I try to think of a movie that I. Oh, uh, I would actually say. Oh, I recently watched the uh, the Mean Girls musical movie. It it wasn't very good. Didn't like it at all. Why? I. What do you mean? Uh, because because I didn't know if I was watching a Rene Rap music video or a Mean Girls movie. Like it was too. Oh, okay. <laughs> like it was doing two things at once and. And uh, some of the jokes weren't good. It's like, it's Mean Girls again, but set in a modernized setting. And it doesn't work at all. I didn't even particularly like the f first Mean Girls anyway. So, like, I had, like, I mean, almost zero I mean, interest yeah, in Yeah, that's fine. Like, oh, my God. It's, 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 it's a bit overrated, but it is considered, like, a 2000s classic for its time, you know? Yeah, I, I feel like I'm just kind of in this weird phase where it's, like, I think a lot of, like, old these old, like, high school, like, classics are kind of shit. Like, I saw... Um, uh, what was that? A uh, John Hughes film, uh, Sixteen Candles, for the first time, and I was like, "Wow! Like this is ass!" Like I, I just, <laughs> like uh, I, yeah. And then I think I lowered both of my scores for, like, I hated like Sixteen Candles so much that I retroactively lowered my scores for um, uh, Breakfast Club and uh, Ferris Bueller by like one point because I was just like, "Jesus, no, fuck you, no." <laughs> so, um, not that movie. I. Wait, wait, which one did you say? Um, Sixteen candles. No, it is not. It is 
awful like jesus christ like not a single likable character they really hammered home on the racism uh apparently apparently if you be a creep and apparently if you be a creep then you'll eventually get the girl that you've been pining after like from the start it's like a bunch of like what the fuck did were you people thinking type experience and this is like the type of movie where people were critics were lauding as like oh it's a realistic portrayal of like high schoolers or whatever i'm like shut the fuck up like no it isn't <laughs> no one talks like this i've never met anyone who talks like this you know but whatever yeah i mean i haven't i haven't seen it in a long time so like since i was a kid but i remember it being pretty good so probably most of this racism sexism you're describing probably flew over my head so yeah how could you not though like they played a gong every time the asian character showed up like yeah again i was i was eight <laughs> okay that didn't those references didn't strike me okay <laughs> no yeah i was gonna say like never mind um cool any any other movies you wanted to mention santi or uh let me uh i just i just want to check my letterbox diary real quick oh oh my god this is gonna sound crazy but i watched napoleon dynamite for the first time what movie sorry i watched napoleon dynamite for the very first time i have never seen it before Uh, and now i have and I'm guessing you didn't like it. Or... No, man. No, oh, man. It's so good. It's one of the funniest movies okay. ever made. <laughs> yes. Yes. You don't agree? Okay. You don't I, agree, I, Timmy? Yeah. Do you not like Napoleon Dynamite? I watched it when I was like 16, and I, I all I remember is, wow, I don't find any of this funny whatsoever. <laughs> like... And all honest, yeah, same to be honest. Yeah, like, hey, thank you, honest. thank you, Luca. Jesus, yeah. You didn't like Napoleon Dynamite? I liked Nacho Libre more than I liked Nacho Libre more than Napoleon Dynamite, and I also found that like almost as equally as <laughs> unfunny. Yeah. No. Listen, listen. If you, Andy, have you seen, like um, dry humor have you seen, uh, and unconventional, like have you seen Talladega Nights. Oh, uh, uh, I have seen Talladega Nights. But I haven't, but I haven't watched it recently, so I haven't seen it in like ten years. So, and also, I'm not a big fan of Adam McKay right now. I think, I think he's a hack. So, unless he wants to, not what, not what, like unless he wants to make a stupid comedy again, then I'll be a fan of him. You know what I mean? If you ain't first, if you ain't first, you're last. I think that's one of the few like Adam McKay's I still haven't seen. But even then, like I'm not looking forward to because I've seen like most of his movies, and I, I think the only one I kind of liked was Anchorman. Uh, the first one, not the second great. one. Uh, fine. Yeah, I've never liked anything else from Adam. I didn't find the other guys very funny or entertaining. If I'm being, I I think Santa, you no, got the other guy. You got has mad that at me with really elite joke at the beginning where the um with the, uh, I think it's Samuel L. Jackson and the Rock, the the aim for the bushes joke. That is yeah, one that of was the funniest funny. things I've ever seen in any movie ever. <laughs> there goes my. That was kind of funny. I'll give it that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and the scene where like Will Ferrell like, like, uh, sh- like, <laughs> like fires a gun in the precinct office, like that got a good laugh out of me. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I just you know, uh, uh, what? Yeah, I. I, I'm not, I don't, I don't disagree that people find it funny, you know, I can totally see why people yeah. find it funny, it's just, oh, no, you I know. Don't li- I don't like the other guys, but I just love that aim for the bushes joke. Yeah, I, I'm just saying, like, jokes like that, I was like, okay, that was pretty good, that was, that was pretty funny, I liked that, but I did not like all of uh, the other guys. It was like watching, um, it was like watching a terrible half-assed, like, American remake of, like, Hot Fuzz or something like that, and I, I was not, <laughs> I was not enjoying it. Also, also, just want to yeah. shout out Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Masterpiece. I oh, love I Tenet so no, much. I, I used to I say I, I used to say that I, I didn't like Tenet, but now I love Tenet, Matt man. Ass. Matt ass to piece. Ass to piece. Shut up. Shut up. Tenet yeah. rules. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to, like, get what's going on. You just gotta vibe with it, okay? Only Christopher Nolan can can purposely create shitty audio quality and then claim that it's some like masterful art choice or some shit you know like i guess only he's capable of doing that okay yeah but yeah, time just... inversion car flips plane go boom come on I, I just think for i i've kind of got to this point in my life where like nolan went from being like this like m- mainstream director that everyone like kisses his feet to like 
I think now he's just gotten to the point where, like, he just makes very hit or miss films for me. Like, sometimes he'll make something great. Like, I really did, like, um, well, Dunkirk, for example. Time. Well, and now I'm saying, like, now at this point, I've I'm, now that my my tastes have matured or whatever. Like, I really like Dunkirk, but you know, Tenet was awful. I did not like I did not like Interstellar either. I I thought that was really fucking hokey and just <laughs> unspecial. Yeah. So, but I still like his uh, Batman movie. So you know, just you'll never know. Sometimes you get something good. Sometimes, you, and I did really like Oppenheimer as well. I thought that was a good one too. So, Can I say a hot take real quick. But Batman Begins sure, go ahead. is better than The Dark Knight, whereas Dark Knight Rises <laughs> is the worst of the trilogy. Yeah, Luca's very happy that you said that. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I agree that I agree that Dark Knight Rises is the worst Batman of the trilogy. Batman Begins is totally better than The Dark Knight. I I ride yeah, with you on that. Absolutely. Till the day I die, like yeah, it is. It is the definitive best one. No, it's not. It is not. <laughs> yeah, it is. You cannot you cannot sit there and say to yourself, yeah, Batman Begins is better than the... Like, the Dark Knight, yeah, you can't, can't say that. Because I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I actually like Dark Knight Rises. I know I, that movie gets a lot of hate for some reason, and I don't really... I mean, okay, I guess I understand why, but... It's not like an awful movie or anything. It's fine. It is like decent. It is competent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just has competent filmmaking, but but I'm not a fan of the story, you know. Yeah, stories the story sucks. Yeah, like and I do like I do like Tom Hardy's Bane. Like he's cool, but he's but he's in like the wrong type of movie at that if uh, if that makes sense. That opening, like, 10 minutes, though, on the plane, where, like, the Bane voice is so Ooh, clearly ADR'd, it's just the funniest, like, meme shit ever. <laughs> no. Now is um, not the time to fear. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. That comes later. Timmy, stop doing it, stop doing it. Stop reading the, um, the Aiden... What's the next his name? The CIA guy's lines, and I'll, I'll do the voice um, of Bane. Okay. Uh, fuck. The, um... Ellie, Aiden Gillen. Does it... Do uh, does, do, uh, will I take off that mask, you, will you die? It would be extremely painful. <laughs> You're a big guy. For you. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you, yeah. Anyway, uh, on top of all that rambling, uh, thank you, Santi, for, uh, give it, for sharing your favorite and least didn't you mention you shared my hatred for dragon ball evolution or is that someone else i'm i I thought for i don't know sure i don't think i i don't think i've ever you, shared that okay someone else did i don't know okay well i'm just i'm just trying to find solidarity man like jesus i do think dragon ball evolution is stinky yeah. don't worry <laughs> well whatever <laughs> I'm just, I'm just exhausted. I'm really fucking tired. So, uh, do you guys have anything else you guys want to ask? Sit, shut the fuck up. Does anyone else have any? Um, uh, does anyone else have anything you guys want to ask Santi, or should we just move on to something else? What is the sickest trick shot you can make on a tech deck? What was the question? What? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know what the question was. What? Uh never mind, man. Don't worry about it. I'm I'm gonna keep this I'm gonna keep all of this in <laughs> when I edit it together. Did did any, did you hear the, the question right to me? No, I heard exactly I heard exactly what you said and I had nothing to to say to that. <laughs> okay, well damn, I guess. Okay, you want to just get straight into Eva? Okay, all right. Well, let's do it. If you're cool with that, uh, Santi. Can I just say, okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, so as Santi beautifully rendered, uh, did a rendition of, uh, we're, uh, uh, we're talking about my recommendations, uh, which are Neon Genesis Evangelion uh, and uh, End of Evangelion, So, uh, and both of which are 
all part of the same sort of continuity slash canon slash whatever you want to call it. Uh, so it's essential that you watch both uh, watch both back to get back. But yeah, uh, Evangelion is uh, the brainchild of uh, uh, Hideaki Anno. Uh, who you know made other stuff that people <laughs> that non weebs might have might have seen slash heard of like Shin Godzilla, Shin Godzilla. Um, and yeah, Shin Kamen Rider. and um, that was what I meant the other week, Timmy, when I said that um the the because I got confused between that and I said the director of Akira made um Shin Godzilla, but I meant I meant the 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 Evangelion guy. I got confused between the two. Yeah, I I think I was like I was like what the fuck are you talking about? You know. Um, uh, can I ask if Shin Godzilla is as depressing as, uh, as Ava? Cause I've never seen it and I don't know, I don't, I don't know what that's like at all. I as depressing as, as Ava. As well, Godzilla <laughs> minus one like, is more depressing like, than Shin Godzilla. Okay, okay, so. Yeah, I guess, but like, <laughs> is it comparable depression, depression wise to, to Ava, Shin Godzilla? Like there are sad moments from Shin Godzilla go from what I remember, one. but... But as far as like the movie being depressing, not really. It's just yeah. Well, okay. Anyway, uh, yeah. Like I said, uh, the series was created by uh, Hideaki Anno, um, and who started out his career uh, as an animator for Miyazaki uh, on the film Nausicaa: of The Valley of the Wind. He was actually responsible. I don't know if you guys know this, but he was actually responsible for drawing and designing the uh the giant god warrior that shows up at the end of uh, nausicaa um that the the giant lava monster that like shoots lasers that shoots lasers out of its mouth or whatever oh uh, ano was responsible for for drawing that creature and in a way um producer at studio ghibli uh toshio suzuki like has stated that like ava is kind of like his attempt at doing Nausicaa because he basically like kind of took the basic design of the God warrior from Nausicaa and then just applied it to essentially a new context, a new setting, whatever. Cause he essentially, because he has stated multiple times that like Nausicaa is like one of his favorite movies and it's like his favorite Miyazaki film. And it's, and he's wanted to make like a sequel and then like a live action film or something like that. Um, all of which Miyazaki said, no, go fuck yourself, <laughs> obviously. Um, but anyway, that just just thought it was some interesting context. Um, so uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion uh, is about uh, about mechas fighting giant aliens, except when it isn't. <laughs> um, it starts out and like except that when it gets into existential crisis. Yeah, it starts out as that, but then, you know, everyone starts getting sad and depressed and everyone starts freaking out and starts um, having existential crises and everyone just gets really, really sad and I'm very, very sad and everything is very, very sad. Um, I think we I think we should just split this apart into uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, like the series and the end of Evangelion. So, like, let's save all of our thoughts for end of Ava until we get to that movie and then just and for now, just focus on the show. So uh, but in the meantime, what did you guys think of uh, of 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 Ava? I, I want to particularly hear Jules's thoughts first, because out of all of us, you've never seen this before. Um, and I'm curious what yeah. that first time experience was like for you. Um, yeah, it was just um, it was I was I. It's kind of weird because I, I had a mixed experience with the show where I was like, like the first two episodes, I was like, oh, the, especially the first one, I was like, really? Like, I was like a bit eh on it. And then you it didn't like, like the first episode. Like, no, I didn't like the first episode. And then, oh, um, wow. Okay. And then as it progressed, I was kind of like, I was like, okay, I, I, I'm liking where this is going now. Um, and I, I was liking those like kind of like kind of one one uh one one episode conflict um stuff like the one on the boat I thought was really great and then like uh. I started getting into the kind of deeper shit and then it was it was really really great like I was like oh I see why everyone likes this so much like the episode where um Shinji's uh, Eva goes berserk is um my favorite episode of the entire show um mm-hmm. stuff like running around on all fours like I think that's a that shot of it running around on all fours through the forest is like a beautiful visual. Uh, and then the uh, the ending, the en- and then the ending sucked. 
Really? You did not like the... Okay, I disagree with this. I but, did not like the um, Okay, well, we'll get into that later. So just, sorry, just to clarify, you're talking about the episode where uh, the 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 unit 01 like awakens and like starts eating the yeah. al- the the yeah, the yeah, angel yeah, that's yeah, what you're yeah. talking about okay the yeah angel, yeah cool uh i disagree on the ending part but yeah well that's it's, one of my favorite episodes yeah well. honestly that's one of my favorite parts of the show if i'm being honest i was like i can't believe there are people out there who did not like this ending but yeah we'll get into that anyway uh what was oh, everyone oh, no, else's I thought was, i was talking about the that episode that Jules was talking about. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, never. But mind. I, 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 I do like the ending, but I will, but I'll explain that later because yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, what do the rest of you guys think about Ava? Whichever, whoever wants to go first. I can go first. Okay. Uh, I've seen Neon Genesis Evangelion before. Uh, I watched it when it came out on Netflix in, I want to say, 2019 was when it, was when it released on Netflix, right? Because I don't think, because it wasn't, it wasn't as popular before it came on Netflix, because, like, that's how Evangelion became so popular to begin with, and... I disagree, I I feel like Ava was very popular even before it came on Netflix, because you have to remember that, like, this show was hyped up by its fan base for being, like, one of the greatest anime of all time. I don't, I, I mean, I have no proof to this. I'm just, like, I'm just saying, like, personally, I feel like the show was popular even before it came. I think it became more accessible, like, on Netflix, because, you know, normies couldn't have, like, there was no way they could, like, watch, watch, watch anime, especially this anime. But now that because Netflix made it available, more people could watch it. But anyway, I'm interrupting you. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 that's, 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 that's what I meant. Okay, um, and, you know, my first impressions, it's, it looks absolutely incredible, even when it came out in the 90s, it's one of those, like, defining, like, you know, 90s anime, um, I really, I really loved the characters, you know, like, like, uh, I knew that this was, I thought that I knew that I would like this movie, just because, just because, no, no, anime. I, I knew that I would like this anime just because it was like, it was more, it was more about telling a story on its characters than telling a story on Mecha's fighting aliens. Like, I'm, I mean, that's what Mobile Suit Gundam is for. And, um, yeah. And, uh, honestly, I never really watched the original ending of the anime. I just, like, uh, I just skipped, like, the last few episodes just to, like, get it to end of Evangelion or whatever. And,. And, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, like, by episode, I want to say, by episode 15, I had no idea where this anime was going, and then, and, 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 and then when it just got depressing as shit, I was like, oh, wow, okay, this, this anime is gonna fuck me up, isn't it? Like, wow, like, when that, um, when, uh, when, what's her name? That, uh, that German girl, like, when she, um, like, Asuka. when she, what? Asuka, yeah, like, when, uh, when Asuka, Asuka gets, like, yeah. gets, like, um, injured, like, that's when I realized, like, oh, man, like, these, these kids are being put through the ringer, like, uh, this is, like, I doubt that, this is basically a commentary on how, <laughs> on how industrial corporations, like, like, a treat. For child soldiers, basically, like. Like a treat, a treat child labor laws, and how it's like that, and also and also like the psychological like relationship between a father and a son, and how like and uh, and how and how children without fathers like like uh, are impacted by their lives or whatever. Like it's like it's really interesting stuff, you know, and and Eva Gellion is up there with one of my fave anime right now it looks like cowboy bebop and um and sorry you're saying oscar looks like Faye from cowboy bebop no 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 like no 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 like i was gonna say like i was gonna say like evangelion is up there with one of my fave anime and it's cowboy bebop oh, sorry. Okay, gotcha. and yeah. um and one piece and okay and jujutsu kaisen so yeah 
Wow, Jujutsu Ka- Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Not talking about season two, okay? No. Just season two. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, I... <laughs> so, uh, Luca? Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, Ava was a show that I had, like, watched once before, um, this watch, and I, I liked it when I watched it the first time, but I, I didn't think I fully, like, got it, um, I think I was a bit younger, and I, yeah, like, it, it just didn't fully sit with me. Um, I didn't, I didn't fully get it, but watching it this time, I really, I really just got it. I, it really connected with me, and I, and I understood a, a lot more of what I was trying to say on, like, a, a deeper level than this is just an anime where giant robots are shooting giant aliens. <laughs> um... Because, I mean, not as not only is there a purpose for why everything is the way it is in this universe, but it is also, like, the, the best type of, I don't know, mecha-esque thing, you know? It, it has the best conflicts, and it uses that as a vessel to talk about deeper and more, and, like, more... Uh, then I don't know. Surface meets the eye, you know. It's a, uh, it it is something that ex like it uses its characters very well. It's not just like a, a, they they're not all just blank slates that are just. It's not about the spectacle, is what I'm trying to say. At least like it's about the spectacle for the first half of the anime, I guess, or uh, like those first twelve ish episodes. Um, but then, yeah, like you guys have mentioned, it turns into something distressing and haunting and, like, d depressing. Like, it, it actually turns into one of the most, like, just saddening pieces of media. Um, and, yeah, I fucked with it a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I really like how it kind of breaches a lot of... Uh, I, uh, anime tropes, I guess. Um, whether that be just in, like, its characters. It, like, I mean, the whole purpose of the first few episodes is just so that the last few episodes can make fun of the first few episodes for them being, <laughs> like, re regular anime episodes, you know? Like, it's really meta, weirdly. And the movie gets even more meta, but... Like, you know, you you start off with the show and it has, like, the kind of ditzy anime music. Like, it's very uplifting and, like, cheery. Um, the and then when the they use that music. music yeah, uh, the breakfast music. Ba, da, da, and when they da, use that da, again. Da, da. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it feels so, it feels so wrong. And you're like, episodes. oh. Yeah, you're like, oh, it's like you're watching a completely different thing. Um, yeah, like even the opening like theme like is just so inappropriate. But like this towards yeah. the end of the show because yeah, it's like it such an epic like... bop. Yeah, the phrase yeah. "become legend, young boy" like feels like so like out of place yeah. by the time yeah. the show is like reaching like its conclusion. <laughs> Because the theme makes it sound like it's, like, this, like, epic, like, inspiring, like, oh, boy becomes hero to fight aliens yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But it's just, like, the complete opposite of that. Like, the, the entire opening is, like, the biggest red herring in the world. It's, like, <laughs> but it's, like, but you can't help but, like, not listen. Like, I, when I was rewatching the it's show, like, like so I... Alive. Yeah, like, I couldn't, I, like, this is one of those shows where, like, I literally cannot get myself to skip the, the opening, because it's such a fucking bop, you know? It's so catchy and yeah. so fun to listen to, but then you just remember, it's like, wow, this is probably the highest point of this episode going forward, because, like, everything else yeah. is just so, yeah, so, so sad and so depressing. Yeah. yeah. It's like that one sense of levity before, it's just like, oh, yeah, this is what you're watching, by the way. And and I'm glad mm -hmm. that the that the movie doesn't have like a cheery intro like the show does. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I feel like it's like one of those like. Um... If I can add another point, like another another like good point of levity is like the scenes with um that is the scenes with Shinji Asuka and Misato like staying in a room together, you know, having breakfast, doing games, 
you know, like it kind of feels like a slice of life, which is nice, you know? Yeah, but they also make fun of that in <laughs> at the end, where, which we'll again get into later. Uh, but I, but yeah, I, I I agree with everything that Lucas says. It's like it starts out as like a very traditional sort of mecha anime, uh, but then like things start falling apart, like pieces like of the puzzle start getting put together, and you realize, I I by by the second half, I don't even think you can call it a mecha anime anymore because like the the mechas aren't mechas; they're not robots. They're like this weird like combination of angel god person thing that's like that's that's being restrained by all these like armor platings to make it look like it's a robot and make it function like a robot so it's like um it it's it, i don't even think it's appropriate to call them like mechas at that point but again like that's uh, that's clearly what like ano was going for because he was clearly trying to subvert a lot of not just like mecha anime tropes but just like anime tropes in general so like santi is obviously more familiar with this than than you guys but like uh i really love how both Asuka and Rey are kind of sub subversion slash fuck yous to like their respective like anime girl tropes. So like Asuka is supposed to like represent is Asuka is like a is a sundere, which if you don't know is like a girl who like hits the main character and beats him up and and well, you know and and is loud and is angry but secretly yeah. likes him or whatever and ray is a uh, you know is a subversion of the kudere trope which is basic a kudere is basically just like the quiet like emotionless girl who doesn't who clear who doesn't seem like she's capable of mo emoting but then as they get to know the main character more they, and as they fall in love with the main character what? more they like open up these are actual tropes like you can look this up if you want i'm not lying i'm not lying about any of this but like um why do you have to say moaning though what i didn't say moaning i said emoting Emotion. yeah Oh, at least in moaning. I was like, what? Can you stop talking about fucking, stop fucking hentai for five seconds? Please? I mean, no. So, um, yeah, and, and I love how, like, but either way, yeah, I love how, like, Ano, like, subverts those tropes by going, okay, I, with Asuka, I really love. Uh, how they subverted this Sundere trope. And this is especially apparent in End of Ava, but I love how, um, Asuka's behavior uh, is really just kind of comes back to just her pa her emotional past, you know, because like in the later episodes, you know, they explore how like, oh, she was actually like uh, her mom, you know, her mom went, uh, went went crazy and then, you know, she started replacing her with like a doll thinking like she was um, she was like Asuka the whole time. And then eventually, like, you know, she kills herself and then and that leaves like a huge emotional scar on Asuka. And that kind of like she she's like buried that deep inside her con sub like, her subconsciousness. And it's only when she fights that like uh, that that. That angel, that that light angel in the sky. All these angels have names, but I've never taken the time to to remember them. Um, where they play the hallelujah song, and she has this like names? breakdown of like, yeah, they have names. Um, uh, and I love how like they have this. She has this like breakdown where like her subconscious that she was so desperately trying to push back on, like starts like swallowing her up to the point where like she literally just becomes like immobile and like she, like her mind is broken at that point to the point where like she's just incapable of um operating the uh, the the unit 02 anymore um and i love how uh, and then on the second half of that subversion i love how asuka's like sundere treatment towards uh shinji is like having real psychological like trauma on 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 shinji himself because this is a kid who's just like so afraid of creating any sort of like personal or intimate moments with like another person especially like especially a woman so and i love how like because asuka keeps beating him down and beating him down like he he's just so much becomes so much more insecure he becomes so much more like close-minded and closeted and, and like it's it, it's 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 her behavior is just as much affecting her psyche as it is is affecting his and again they go into this more in end of ava but i just love how like like these tropes that we find cute and adorable and and whatever uh in anime are like genuinely like making these characters get fucked up and like and then with like ray it's like 
um she's kind of like she has her own sort of separate thing where it's like oh she's just emotionless because that's just her personality that's just her you know that's just who she is whatever blah 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 but i'm sure she'll open up like as she gets to know shinji and i guess she kind of does but it's the reason why she's the way that she is is because she's technically like not even her own original person she's like this weird like combination between lilith who, who by the way is the angel that's like doing the jesus pose and shinji's mom so in a way she's a clone of of, of shinji's mom so it's just causes this like extra level of like what the fuck you know moments because keep in mind you know like he did some anime isms to her you know he he did the whole oops i fell down and i and i and i looked at you naked and blah 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 all this other stuff you know so it's like uh you know so um but yeah i obviously obviously there's more into it but you know i just love how like the the anime isn't just like a subversion on the mecha mecha genre which i'm not even that familiar with i haven't seen a lot of mobile suit gundam and like my experience with Mecha goes as far as like Gurren Logan, Code Geass, like that sort of stuff. But I love how like even though I'm not that familiar with the tropes, I could still see which tropes that Anna was subverting. I can still see like which like even like non Mecha anime st tropes. You know, like I said with the Sundere Kudere stuff, like I could still very clearly see that like Anna was trying to subvert all this stuff. And and in my opinion, he did a very good job doing that. I mean, yeah, one thing that I specifically like that the show kind of, um, I guess, breaches the trope of is just kind of, like, nudity in anime and, like, sexualization of characters in anime. Because, mm. um, obviously, in a lot of anime, um, <laughs> a lot of characters, uh, and underage characters as well, um, are, like, just extremely sexualized, and, like, in a lot of anime, there, there is, like, like, it's just, a, it's just a trope. It's just a thing that exists for some odd, weird reason. Cultural reasons. Um, of, in Japanese culture. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... Yeah, I like that this fu that this show pretty much says actually that's a really fucking weird thing to do, um, and like it 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 is for it is not one second trying to sexualize its characters. It's not trying to give them the biggest genitalia and breasts to show off in their character design. Their designs are so much more distinct and memorable than just like the features of their their body, um, and a, a lot of the characters as well even have arcs that relate to this idea of sexualization and objectification. Um, I mean, like the kids, like there. I mean, l I mean, let's not bite around the bush here. There are moments where you actually see these kids nude in this anime like but it is never once ever done for sexual arousement or in, or or any of those intended purposes it is like in fact they there are many uses of it where they are trying to make it quite like like n n haunting to look at and like well not haunting but you know like they they're not they're not doing it in a way where where a typical Japanese animated show would do. Yeah, it's not um, like it, it feels like and... the it feels like anti fan service, you know, like because like a lot of like anime like this fans. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I mean, and <laughs> even even in the movie, there's kind of like a nod to like the type of people that would consume and interact. Yeah, with that kind of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. The is, mm -hmm. There is that. There's that moment with shinji in the hospital and i and i, I don't again know I go we're gonna any we're gonna save that just, yeah we're gonna gross. save that until the yeah but, end of ava but yeah, yeah. i know exactly what you're talking about um, <laughs> yeah i i think it i think that just ties into the current point that i'm making is that like it is um it is like not trying to excuse any of those kinds of actions and one character arc that i especially love i mean maybe this is something else i should send say for end of Ava, but I'm on this train right now, so I'm gonna ride it, um, is uh, Misato's, and she is kind of like a character that 
um, she like the only way she really knows how to um, interact with people and show people compassion and care is like through sexual acts like that's like her one way of reconnecting with uh, the one character Kaji and um, it yeah. is like yeah the the ex-boyfriend character and it's explored often in her show and in the, in the show it's something that like Shinji even like seems to frown upon he's like that's gross but it's like it's like one of her only things of humanity it's one of her only vices that is keeping her away from like you know all these negative thoughts that everyone in the show yeah is it's like that thing and even, sorry even that is used to her detriment as well because i mean i'm bringing up the movie again but there's that moment where she like kind of motivates shinji shinji to carry on fighting but does something illegal and cruel and kisses him and it's like it's that i'm not yeah, once pizza. that's that how grown-ups scene. kiss yeah. yeah like they they pull a yeah like not once in that scene like is it ever played off as like triumphant or or um you know it's like it's it's kind of played off as a shock like the way it's directed there's like this long angle from far away and you're like you're kind of left in this shock you're like oh that that's not <laughs> cool but obviously you still feel for Masato because she's still a character that you've grown yeah. with this whole uh, show and movie and you understand her struggles and like e even even in her d death scene like she kind of calls out towards Kaji like that's her like last sort of connection and it's like yeah all these things and I just really appreciate that this show like had the balls to kind of go against like a whole uh I guess stereotype and a whole like y like culture of specific and or like um, an established way of things and being like actually no mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why I think like you know kind of simping over characters like Misato and stuff is kind of not a cool thing to yeah, do. Yeah but that clearly like, hasn't yeah. stopped. Especially like <laughs> that clearly has, but that hasn't well been i was just gonna say that clearly that <laughs> yeah, clearly hasn't exactly. been stopping just a lot of people because you have to keep in mind that like this series became a huge phenomenon so obviously like you know like figures and like you know uh like uh body pillows of like all the waifus from like evangelion is like commercialized and being sold is sold and like bought like hotcakes yeah, so which like seems like the complete up. opposite of what the show intended anyway um so uh, um i yeah i'm glad you brought that up uh luca because i guess i'll just have this opportunity to talk about misato as well i love yeah i love everything that you brought up and i 100 percent agree i i just love how sort of there are two types of misato there is the one who is in nerve who like operates the 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 battles or whatever who like tell who directs like leva's like what to do how to fight blah 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 whatever and then there's the um uh, the uh, uh there the, there's the misato who's at home who like who like who drinks a beer at like 8 a.m in the morning you know it'd be like yeah that's so good it's so good or whatever you know like it's and keep in mind this is all with like ha the happy breakfast time music it's like da 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 like it's and it's like it's but like the more you think about it you're just like wow this is like really depressing it's like you're drinking not only are you drinking beer at 8 a.m it's like this is the thing that like really excites you at the end of the day you know and like as we later see throughout the show yeah. like misato is <laughs> yeah like misato beer. like is arguably like just as broken of a character as like any of the other characters you know because as she mentioned like she has this very complicated relationship with her dad where like she hated him for most of his life and you know she didn't think much of him but she, he also saved her at the end you know when like the second impact happened like when um you know, he he's the one who put her in that pod that like protected uh protected her. And since then she's had this like weird relationship with his dad where it's like he's still you know, he she can't even say if she liked or loved or hated her dad, you know, like she she joined Nerve purely out of spite to get revenge on the angels who killed her dad, even though this is someone who 
you know, didn't she, she didn't even like care for until the last minute. And, you know, like then she starts dating Kaji because he reminds her of 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 her dad, you know, like so yeah, she has this sort of like father complex type situation. Everyone just sort of has a father complex type situation. That's the only reason why like Asuka is like so into like Kaji to the point where like Asuka literally like tries to offer herself to Kaji. She's like, "No, no, no, look at me. I'm an adult. Like I'm an I'm a I'm an adult. I'm more grown up than the other kids my age. Like please like like take me or whatever." And it's just like really fucking depressing because it's like like these women are just like like they just, they need to feel like validation and like genuine human connection and they feel like they're the they can only do that by like essentially just having sex with Kaji which is just really depressing because it's like you know they clearly showcase that they have value outside of that you know like Misato is like like 95% of the reason why the Avas like keep beating the angels is because of you know, her ability to, like, to prove herself to be a capable leader. And then Asuka herself is just this, like, really skilled pilot. But the fact that they're so, like, so attached to Kaji and so, like, desperate to, like, earn that human connection with them. And, you know, once they start going out, quote-unquote, Misato and Kaji, like, it, it genuinely, like, upsets Asuka because she feels like she's being betrayed by Kaji because she has said multiple times that she loves him, but, like, he obviously can't reciprocate that because she's fucking 14 years old, you know? So, yeah, it's just really, really depressing, you know? And it's, like, the show doesn't even, like, make you think... What I love in the end about the show is that you don't really think about these things during the first half because the first half is still just like, oh, you know, it's like a Power Rangers Megazord, you know, episode, just like, oh, monsters here, like, get in the robot, get in the fucking robot Shinji, fight them and then kill them, you know? Like, it's just, <laughs> yeah, get in the robot, get in the robot Shinji. Shinji. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Shinji is a very kind of just like really, really, really interesting character in general, in the way that he's, like, um, the, he's extremely just, like, because he, it's, it's a very great kind of breakdown of just, like, of, like, what it, I guess you could say a realistic. Teenage like, depression. Like, he was just, like, really just, like, thrust into this yeah. situation, like, just, like, really, like, just pushed into it, like, get in the <laughs> fucking robot <laughs> Shinji. And it's, like, he's so kind of, like, emotionally repressed in in lots of ways like as you said like he never he never knows how to um like to to have any sort of intimate meaningful moments with people especially women um so like that's why i think um like people people like to say like oh he's like a in most reviews i've read they're like yeah but he's kind of like a a low reviews i've read is that like he's a he's a pervert and he's like a he's like a bad person and stuff and i think like he because he's so emotionally repressed his like you know like he's he's 14 his like his horniness is like the thing he can't is the thing he can hide the least so that's why it feels like so prevalent in, it's like, hard um, like when him when he like, oh, when he oh, yeah oh, he gets geez. hard when he hears oh. uh bisato and osko like washing themselves like in the in the spa or whatever in that episode i forgot which one it was but yeah like <laughs> i agree yeah you're right it's like that was the uh I think that's episode seven or eight. Yeah, yeah. I forgot which angel they fought fought in that one. You'll have to r remind me. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no, I I agree. Yeah, because it's like because I, I feel like that's like a lot of like ne whatever like people have stated that they don't like Shinji. It's like oh, he's a little bitch. He's a pervert. He's a bad person. Whatever. Like no one is like a good person in this show. Like let's be real. Like maybe like the. His... Yeah, they're very they're very flawed and nuanced. Yeah, like despite with like the stuff like like how you might look at Misato on the surface or Asuka on the surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm? Sorry, sorry, Santi. What'd you say? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just saying that Kendo Okari certainly isn't a good person either. So yeah, and and I love yeah. how like yeah, I I mean we get we learn more of his like motivations and and backstory later on the show and then especially and an end, end of Ava but I love how like I love the relationship between Gendo and Shinji not like you know actually just like how it's like being explored because 
Yeah, Gendo. Um, and I, I love how like Shinji. I, I, I also agree. I think Shinji is an incredibly fascinating character. And Ano has stated that like, out of all the characters in the show, like he relates to Shinji the most. And and you can clearly tell because I love how Shinji is just being treated so fucking awfully by his dad because his dad has this sort of mentality where it's That's like, terrible. yeah, his dad has has this mentality where it's like it's my way or the highway it's like it's he's like oh like yeah he he's <laughs> he's he's sort of like a the worst kind of best like uh like uh like forced for the trees type person um and i love how he just is so disregarding of shinji's feelings that like he, he he's like a big reason of what traumatizes shinji like consistently throughout the show because he is consistently traumatized every time he has to like get inside the fucking robot and 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 fight an angel like i yeah. one of my favorite moments and arguably one of the more traumatic moments is is the is the episode where uh, uh his 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 like high school friend toji like is selected as like the fourth child and he's like he's attached to the ava that's that quick that people realize like is secretly an angel the whole time but no one tells him who's inside um uh inside inside that inside that oh, ava man, unit yeah. but and but even then like even though shinji at this point like doesn't know who's inside the the ava he like he hesitates because he like he doesn't uh like he knows that like there's another person in that in that suit like there's another like 13 14 year old like kid the same age as him inside that robot and it's why he doesn't fight back and when when gendo is like why aren't you fighting back like they're gonna kill you and shinji's like i'd rather let it kill me than like kill it because i don't want like blood on my hands and get and his and shinji's dad's only response is that's irrelevant like it's an angel it's our enemy kill it like it doesn't matter who's inside it kill it and when shinji doesn't want to fight back like like essentially gendo like forces him to because he because he puts in the dummy plug and forces shinji to to beat the shit out of this angel controlled ava unit and you know and it's when like it has like the plug or whatever where like shinji's like begging his dad like please please stop like don't make me do this i don't want to do this and he crushes it and and i love how like it's not until the literal like minute or two of that episode where he finds out that like oh that's toji that's his friend you know that's his high school friend and you know like obviously there are plenty other examples besides that but i just love i just i it's so traumatizing to see this this father just so disregarded of his his son's feelings and actively forcing him uh to do these things and when he's not forcing him he's basically guilt tripping him <laughs> into like committing all these awful acts and it leaves like a terrible mental scar in shinji but like gendo doesn't have to pay the price he's not the one like driving the ava unit he's not the one like out there fighting it's just it's it's just really really fucked up but i think it's just so expertly explored as well yeah i mean i think the one of the most like like surprising like moments like both to to Shinji and and as the audience watching was like the one bit where um he actually like praises Shinji he says like well well done and you can see like the the clear effect that that has on him mm. where it's just like his ego is he, inflated he needs that more than yeah yeah well no also that also that he he feels like like a moment of attention and caring by his father for the first time and then he that that becomes like such a like a big influence on him like the way his father influences him through that just basically like holds like the 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 thread of like um i'll i'll give you i'll give you praise so you feel like i'm so you feel like you're being a good son and you don't have to be insecure about yourself basically yeah i'm glad um you mentioned that um one episode with um the um or shinji's like kind of dilemma to um like not obviously not wanting to attack the other ava that was possessed by an angel um that was actually uh that actually leads into one of like my small little critiques with the show um, okay which i only i only have like two small little ones um whereas i think the the film is completely perfect um, but I guess with the show, um, uh, gosh, I, I'm struggling on his name, but the, his, like, 
friend character that ended up being the pilot of Koji. Um, that Ava, Ho- uh, Koji. Yes, that's it. Koji. Um, yeah, Koji. <laughs> that's what I said. No, t- no, T O J I, oh. not K O J I. Oh, T O. Yeah. Oopsie. Mm-hmm. Sorry. That's my bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, with Toji, I wish they they kind of explored their dynamic after that whole situation a bit more because it was kind of just left behind. Like he kind of did that thing, and like they 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 show Toji in the hospital, um, uh, but then they just say that he's been dispatched and everything's chilled. Like you don't really get an interaction with them. Uh, together afterwards or anything you know um and i think i i I guess i i wanted a bit more from that because i mean we are shown that shinji is a very vulnerable person yes but i and like doesn't really want to um open up and share memories with the people around him but he he did become friends with like these two dudes and like that friendship or like the the further exploration of that dynamic is kind of like just dumped after that episode essentially like um so that's my one little problem with the show yeah. and my second I, I, is I, just I... the the oh sorry did you want to say something about no that? i was just uh, it's i i was just going to push back a little and say I, I I understand where you're coming from with that, but I also just think I've kind of like, I feel like his purpose in the story like had already been fulfilled at that point. Like his place in the story is like over at that moment, so it's like I, I wasn't mean, very I particularly know how too upset. Affected him as well. I I, like, I know, but like I I just they, like, like built I, up him kind of being affected by it like earlier on in that ep- that's in that fair. Yeah. yeah, I just think that like it was just a really great contrast with that with like the third episode where the, where that character is introduced because he's introduces like this bully character you know who like punches him in the face but then like he also like witnesses just how traumatizing this shit is to shinji because he's you know he he saw him like you know scream and like you know as he like kills yeah. the that other angel with the knife or whatever so it's like yeah i i just think that like it it fulfilled its his his role in the story in the sense that like oh it like it it comes back uh, it comes back around like it like like a circle type situation where he's like oh he can see like just how traumatizing this is to shinji and then like he's on the receiving end of that like traumatizing like breakdown of shinji as well um i mean that being said i still kind of agree with what you're saying and you know it, it, i i'll relent i do kind of wish we saw more of that but i was satisfied with how that concluded i was i thought that was a fine way to end his character arc anyway yeah i go go ahead and talk about whatever your second point was yeah i guess i just wish i wanted a bit more from that and then my other point this one's very small but i just think the the structure and like the first few episodes does get a bit repetitive exactly um because mm-hmm. it's like okay angel fight oh then another one oh then another one you know and i'm and i'm glad like it kind of evolves i can those, counterpoint and say think, that like, i like how i like how every angel like looks different you know like the design of them oh yeah like i like cool shit like that oh yeah they're great, great. Yeah, I was I was actually like thinking like um because obviously the most recent I guess like exposure I've had to these angels is like the um the the inspiration that the nope alien um had. Oh like, yeah. And 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 like that that alien in nope made You mean Jean Jacket? Really <laughs> freaked out. Uh yeah, Jean Jacket. Yeah, Jean Jacket really freaked me out when I watched that film, and, like, watching the angels in this show again, like, they also, like, were able to give me the same sense of, like, uneasiness and creepiness, like, because they are just so, especially, like, yeah. Yeah, some of them are just straight up just, like, what the fuck? Like, one of them is just straight up a pyramid, you know? And, I mean, like, that one was exactly. shoots lasers. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, like, the more, like... Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I'm... Uh, but, yeah. like, the, like, kind of just the cosmic... Like a big ball or something, or... Yeah, I-, I know exactly which one you're talking about. 
What did what did you say? I didn't I didn't hear what you said. No, no, no. I was talking about like I was thinking about one of the aliens was like a big ball, or something like. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I I know what you're saying. Yeah yeah. Some of these like designs for the angels are just so fucking fake. Like you said, like terrifying and insane. You know, like the I've I've always found um, you know, some of the. Um, some, I've always found that pyramid one kind of scary, you know, like, um, just for me personally, because like some of the other angels, I'm just like, okay, that's a, that's an alien. That's a monster. You know, like uh, you'd probably see something like that in like a Gundam Power Rangers-esque like Megazord type shit, you know, but like something like the pyramid to me is just so just like, it's just a pyramid and it's shooting lasers. And was it also the? Did it also have the drill capacity, or am I thinking of like a different angel? Um, but oh um, yeah, no, it did have the drill. No, yeah, the now I remember. Is the one that yeah yeah and I, yeah and I just yeah I just it's so like strange and so like weird to look at that it's kind of like unsettling. The third and I and I love how. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, I just want to like no. I just want to like point this out. Like one of so like the third angel is named Sakiel, right? Then you have another one called uh-huh. Shamsel. So the pyramid that you're talking about is called Ramiel. And it's okay. actually an octahedron. But I'm glad you brought up the age only. I'll, I'll get to this point after I finish what I was going to say. I, and I, I, I guess what I found about that terrifying is just like the like the 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 story surrounding that particular angel, because we get a glimpse into like um um into uh ray psyche because she mentions multiple times in that episode to shinji that she's disposable that like she's replaceable um and i really love that line where ray asks like uh why are you afraid and shinji's like i i'm afraid that i'm gonna die and ray's response is you're not gonna die because i'll protect you um, and then she says goodbye to him because she just she's just so confident that she'll she won't survive um that episode. Um, but it's only when like she's like um Shin, Shinji manages to kill the pier- the oct- whatever you just said, Santi, the I'm just gonna keep calling it a pyramid because fuck you. Um yeah, I'm like uh, when he kills the pyramid the angel, um and and shinji like manages to save ray and he's like don't say stuff like that like we're gonna be into this together then she's and she she genuinely doesn't know how to respond to his like emotional vulnerability like that's how like kind of broken of a character ray is as well like he he doesn't he's like breaking down like you know opening himself up to her and she's like i don't know how i'm supposed to respond to this i i genuinely don't know how to respond and she's he's just like well smiling you know, would help for a start. And she does it, and it's the first time she emotes in any way, you know? Like, and it's 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 a happy moment at first, but then you're just like, oh my god, Jesus. Like, it's, like, it, it all goes downhill from here, you know? Because as we find out later in the, in the later episodes, when she says she's disposable, she's not just talking about her self-worth. She is literally disposable because there are, like, hundreds of copies of, like, Ray like, floating around in, like, a bath of tank, you know? So it's, like... So on that end, it's just really depressing as well. Um, but anyway, uh, the... Sorry? Yeah, like I was gonna say, like, Ritsuko was a part of that, right? And that's what ends, like, Misato and Ritsuko's friendship? Yeah, like, it's... It, I, I think it's a matter of, like, Rits- Ritsuko... Can, oh my god, there's the, that in of itself is also a can of worms. There's so much to talk about, but I'll get back to that, I promise. Um, I, but, um, but on the second point that I wanted to bring up, there is a lot of Bible imagery in this show. Like, there's a lot of, like... There's bi- a lot of, like, religious bi- imagery oh god, in this like show. Zach's like, 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 every time an angel dies, like, they shoot up, like, a big-ass 
cross beam or whatever frost yeah yeah and that has been i find that one so funny because so many people have like been trying to figure out what that means like symbolically and like metaphorically it's like what's the deeper meaning behind that and when <laughs> yeah and like and no joke when ano asked when someone asked like ano what that meant his response was literally I'm just stupid. i don't know i thought it was cool <laughs> like that's it <laughs> like that's, that's it awesome. like he just thought it was cool and he put it in there which is why like i i find like a lot of i find a lot of like um just like analyses on these videos like not only just like unnecessary but also just like defeats the purpose of the show because the show to me like breaking down every single thing and their meaning of what happens in this show is like trying to do that for like 2001 it's like yeah i guess you technically could but like you're just missing the forest for the trees like that's not this is not really the show that like you just break down every single thing. It's more about, like, the emotional experience you have. Like, what I remember about this show aren't, like, the technical minutia. It's not like, oh, what does this thing mean or what does that thing mean? It's, like, the the emotional journey and ride that I go on with these characters, you know? Like, I, I the thing that I'm going to remember 10, 20 years from now are, like, these breakdowns, these, these moments of intimacy and, like, personal relationships with, like, Shinji and Asuka and Rei and Misato and all these other people. So... But anyway, um, what uh, that's that's my spiel. Should we talk about um, the ending of the show? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, because um, I I have a lot to but, say. But before I do, though, oh yeah, okay, we clearly are going to like go a lot into. This, so I want to bring up one more thing. I'm sorry, I really really love this show. I literally ha like could go on. So I I love uh that that flashback episode where uh we go in depth into like Professor. What's his name? Fuck. Um, the old guy that's with Gendo, like everywhere. What's his name? Um, the uh, professor. The uh, the Grand Moff Tarkin of the show. Got it. Because yeah, he kind of looks like guy, Grand Moff yeah. Tarkin to me. Uh, I don't know what it is. He just does. Um. Well, anyway, like uh, in that episode where they explore his past, I I really really love um uh gendo's relationship with like the scientist women of this show because like after ua uh gendo's wife like dies slash disappears slash gets absorbed whatever um she has an affair uh sorry he has an affair with uh ritsuko's mom uh which even she's just like i don't really know like if this is right because you know Yue only like died like so like a certain number of times ago, but you know he just does it, and eventually like she's kind of like essentially just like kind of like slut shamed for it by like Ray because you have to keep in mind Ray is also like a clone of 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 Yue, and it gets so bad to the point that she you know she chokes him, um sorry she chokes Ray. And then after she does that, she jumps off like the the control board and like and takes her own life, and 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 it it is also deeply like psychologically scarring for uh, Ritsuko because not only does she practically witness all of this, uh, including the affair, but she herself gets into an affair with Shinji's dad too. Like I mean, they don't like show it to the extent that like they did with Ritsuko's mom, but like she does like heavily imply that like she got into an affair with. Um, uh with uh with 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 gendo and and i just i think it's really fascinating that like in the end like all these people who work for him are just tools uh for gendo like he does not give a shit about anyone in this like in this operation he does not care about anyone not even for his own son and especially not you know for the women that like he's essentially just using to please himself and and it's just having this huge psychological effect on 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 especially ritsuko because not only is she like basically forced to like guard all of his like deepest secrets but also just like having this affair with with gendo as well you know and it's yeah it's just really traumatizing and it it gets to the point where like ritsuko just like reaches her breaking point she just can't handle it anymore and you know she just she just lets it all out she just can't process it and, and i just think like that in in that in that sense like the way like gendo is like truly a monster and keep in mind this is a guy who's like tasked with like protecting humanity he's supposedly this this general this 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 main scientist guy who's tasked with saving humanity from the angels and yet but yet he clearly just could not give the slightest shits about humanity so um 
But anyway, yeah, I we can just get into the ending now. Yeah, so the ending of the show. Uh, the last two episodes, particularly the last episode, I I was not a fan of. I did not like it. Um, okay. Well, to be honest, well, I was I was fine. I think it transitioned quite like quite well into like this kind of like really existential like surrealist shit. Um, and I was like, okay, yes, I, I like where this is going. And then, like the very very last scene happens, where um, which is like I feel like oh, you don't like the congratulations I not, scene? I really did not like that scene. I think I think it was just like. It's like <laughs> with it with the ending, the way it it kind of came off to me was just kind of like one of those people who just like who kind of says like just stop being depressed and start being happy. That's that's how that scene felt to me. Like I thought it was so. Oh no, I disagree. I, I disagree. So yeah, that's... and just so. Hey, what I miss? <laughs> nothing much. I thought it was so cliched. But we're talking about the ending. And yeah, just so kind of. You know, everybody say congratulations, congratulations. Like, no, I, yeah, I hated that scene. I hated it. I, yeah, I, I think it's yeah. corny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I disagree. I, I I, really do like that ending. I think it is satisfying. I, I mean, okay, I sort of understand what you're saying and where it's coming from, but, but again, it's like this whole... Uh, process is just so psychedelic and so like weird and abstract that it's like a a lot of it just i don't know how to describe it in words but i guess for me like i think this is just really the push that shinji needed as a character you know like he like for because for a lot of the show he's just like very much like refuses to talk about his issues except like you know those brief moments where he's on like the train or whatever where he's like stuck inside like an Ava unit or something like he just refuses to talk about his problems and it's these last two episodes when like the third impact happens and like the, all the all the human souls get like compiled in this mega soul or whatever you know like now that he's like forced to share a soul with everyone else like he like he has to be confronted he has to like confront his like personal issues he has to like deal with this trauma that he's been caring for so long and i and i and i've always viewed that like congratulations scene at the end as like him finally being able to like just kind of like recognize that like this has been like weighing him down for too long and he can finally like let go and finally just um you know just essentially be happy and i know that again that sounds corny but within the context of that ending i think they pulled it off very well because like keep in mind they also showed that alternate like what could have been you know like they show like what if ava was a high school rom-com or some shit you know where like asuka's the childhood friend and ray is the 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 transfer student or, or whatever and misato's the teacher blah 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 all this other stuff you know it's like you know there are possibilities where he can be happy you know he doesn't have to be subjected to such sadness and depressions like he can he can create possibilities for himself where he can be happy and move on with his life you know and it's it's why like at the end like the last words were thank you father he thanks his father even though his father has been nothing but a tremendous piece of shit to him for like the entire show you know because it's like it's him finally just recognizing like look i'm never gonna be able to you know reconcile whatever it, whatever the, that was there to reconcile with my father it's just never going to happen like this is just how our, our relationship is the best thing i can do is just move on and just find some semblance of happiness for himself and you know he thanks his mom um you know for being supportive of him even though he can barely remember her and then you know just like thanking the the children you know the the, the people who are with him from beginning to end you know it's him like recognizing that I do not have to be sad anymore, so I'm trying to give myself the opportunity and the pathway to live a happier life. And in 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 that context, that's what I love about the ending. I think that that makes it very emotionally powerful for me, and I really really connected with that. Um, but I'm not saying your interpretation, Jules, is wrong. Like you can interpret it like that, and it is corny and it is kind of dumb. But like. 
but it like uh, still like it's it, it's satisfying you know like it, it it is something that shinji needs to finally move on with his life you know does that does what i'm saying make sense yeah i mean i i, I agree with what you're saying in theory but i think it's just the way that it that it's pulled off is just like what makes it like not very good for me because i feel like there's a lot of like in those those surrealist scenes of like the last two episodes i think there's there's a lot of like indulgence into into just like characters like saying their thoughts out loud uh rather than than really like taking the time in in ways that i find like well done to like round out these character these characters arcs especially shinji yeah i just and i think that and and then to have it end like that just like really like left like a sour like taste in my mouth i was like oh well that was like not very good or not very satisfying okay yeah well i'm not saying you're wrong because i feel a lot of people felt the way that you did which is why they said (laughs) death threats to to auto and and Gydex to change the ending <laughs> so um, yeah and they did and yeah I mean, but i feel like i feel like more more what people's people were, were seem to be their criticism was that it was like really like too abstract um and that it was like that it was like too like veered too much from reality which I think is silly because I like I I like I didn't I think like it was like that. Like yeah, does, I didn't think um, that was that. Th- even though I have its problems with the way, yeah, with the way it's done, pretty much. Um, but I think to to go into that to that real that really real like like just physical feeling and mental feeling of like what like an existential crisis is like is like very very well done even though I have my, my issues with it. Like, it's just like, it's a nightmare that you, that you cannot escape from. And it's, and yeah, that nightmare is pretty, pretty surrealist. You, yeah. You f- feel a lot of pretty surrealist shit when you're having an existential crisis. I say as someone who has had an existential crisis. I, yeah, I a hundred percent agree with that. And I think like, for me, and it's not just that ending, it's just, like, all the other times that Shinji and just pretty much anyone else just has a fucking breakdown, where it's, like, I think this show, in in a way, is kind of, like, one of the best depictions of not just teenage depression, but just For depression sure. in general. Because, like, you have to keep in mind, Ano was in a state of depression when he was making this show, like, and he wanted to make this show as, like, a way of, like coping with his like with his like internal feelings and like for me when the abstract moments happen i think to me that is like a way better like representation of like having an existential crisis having a breakdown having these like feelings of insecurity guilt and you know emotional trauma like that does a better like i feel like you can't do a better job than that because it's like you know, feelings are, like, complex, you know? They they can't just... You can't just, like, you know, say them out loud like it's some shitty Oscar bait movie or whatever, you know? It's, like, these are internal feelings that we can't rationalize, that we can't, like, conceptualize, like, in a way that, like, makes sense to us. Like, they, they're, they're things that just happen and are weird and trippy, and it's just... But that's just, like, the best way to sum up our feelings. It's, like, we can't, like, really wrap around that concept in a way that like makes sense it it doesn't make sense like if we if everyone on the planet could just stop being sad then we would obviously do it but we can't you know it's just these like it's just how human nature is built and you know this is one way to to showcase how what it's like dealing with that sort of thing and i think it is a very powerful way because i do relate to a lot of the the more abstract moments i do relate to a lot of the characters and their sort of like traumas and how they use these like abstract moments to deal with it and stuff you know so but anyway yeah santi and luca what are your thoughts on the ending we've been talking a lot about this uh sure um i know enough about the uh the final episode of evangelion uh i think it's a little bit cheesy but i understand but i totally get why people like it i totally get why people don't like it but I just think I just think I'm more biased towards like the end of Evangelion movie just because I think that's a more well written conclusion to me 
Just because, just because um, I like movies and shows with consequences, so. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Timmy, as where I think they are great episodes. Um, great, yeah, great episodes, sorry. Uh, I don't know if that came through my mic. We agree um, on something? This is truly the craziest day of all time. But I, I also agree with Jules, where, whereas, like, if end of Ava movie didn't exist and this was the ending, I would feel very unsatisfied. I think... I think I like these episodes in the context knowing that the end of Ava film exists. Because me personally, I don't see this as the end of the series. I, that's why there is a whole separate movie called End of Eight. Of Ava. Even, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for me, I just see these as like a kind of jump forward in time a bit. Um, and because the, the show near the end, especially, is very loose with its chronology and when it decides to show things and stuff. Like, you actually see like um misato just randomly dead in episode 25 and then only in the movie you see how she actually dies you know so there's whole lots of like bits and pieces that you need to piece together and um that's why uh and same with ritsuko as well like you see her just randomly dead in the show um but then in the film like you actually see how she dies and stuff but yeah um and as with everyone <laughs> but um yeah i kind of see it as like uh they kind of go hand in hand and they are just a part of the same uh canon in a way like they are part like i know they are two very distinctly different things but i kind of see that uh the Shinji goes through this arc and then that kind of aids to his realization in the movie that he doesn't want to that he's that he decides that he is able to live with people again and return I, I, to earth i i think that might be a, no sorry you can finish your thought yeah but then it's kind of a he he returns to earth and reality kind of checks in and it's still fucked up and i mean i know i know there's like different uh you know they're like different universes or whatever it's like different endings with different tones and stuff but i i think i just like making a a personal headcanon for myself because there is context that is explained in the movie that does relate to what you see in this film so uh, in in these final episodes, sorry. So like, yeah. you know, there clearly is glimpses. So I just can't see them apart, honestly. Um, so that's why I kind of see them as like, not the end of the show, and the 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 thing that is literally called end of Ava is <laughs> the end. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> um, but because like yeah, I would also like if I was sitting there. And in 1996, and the show just ended, and I didn't, and I didn't know that there was gonna be a movie. I would be pretty unsatisfied with this ending. I would be like, "What the fuck?" But the movie ends up explaining so much and providing context for so much, and I, and I think it's perfect. Speaking yeah, I, of... I think. Yeah, we'll well, we'll, gonna, we'll just we're gonna we're just gonna say, jump into the end of Ava. Adding yeah. onto your point. Yeah. Adding onto your point, I feel like my my criticisms might actually vanish a lot more on a second watch because i feel like this is like a, a this is like kind of like one of those like you haven't watched it till you've like watched it like at least twice or it's like yeah. where you can fully like on a second watch like get the the kind of big picture of everything that's going on so i feel like mm. a lot like for as much as i have my criticisms of it and i'm not like head over heels for it although i did like it um i feel like a lot of those are going to actually vanish when i watch it again 
Exactly. Yeah, I I was just going to uh, mention that, like, I feel like the reason why I am in love with this ending is just purely because I have because I've already seen all of this stuff before, like when I was like 15, 16. So I knew what was going to happen. Um, So I guess like because I had the context of End of Ava in mind, I really loved the ending um, to the show purely because it like, it fits very nicely with the ending of end of Ava as well. Um, but I also 100% agree with you, uh, Jules, that I do not think this is a show that you have seen until you've seen it twice. It almost, it, I, I remember, so I was in watching, I was rewatching the show with Cole, uh, uh, a friend of ours, uh, Santi, um, who, who, who has never seen the show either. Um, and I, and I, and I, um, and and I kept making comparisons to like 2001 in the sense that like I mean I already did make a comparison to 2001, but it's also the case in, in this with this moment where it's like 2001 is also another movie where it's like I that's a film you haven't really experienced until you've seen it at least twice, you know? Because when you watch it the first time, you're just not going to know what the fuck is going on, and you're just like really confused. But when you rewatch it and you kind of internalize what's happening now that you know like the context of everything, it becomes a movie that's just so much more special and so much more trans like transcendent. And the yeah. show is kind of the same I mean, thing yeah. where it's I like think you can probably get 2001 on, on the first watch, honestly. Though I'm sure, but it's like I for me that's that at least that was my personal experience, like. I'm a huge Kubrick head, and I did not get 2001 the first time I saw it. It was only when I watched it the second and third time where I was like, "Oh, this start. This is starting to click now. Like now, I finally get this." And this, I've had this sort of similar experience um, with Ava, uh, where I don't know about you guys uh, because I don't know your personal histories, but for me, I was also in the same camp as Luca, where it's like I really liked this show, but. I was also in that fa- I didn't like fully was head over heels in love with it purely because I was a naive like 15 year old where like I was in a whole like ignorance is bliss like I'm I'm living like a living a great ass life type like moment in my life so like I really couldn't connect with like the personal emotions and like the traumatizing horrors of that show but now as an adult where I have to deal with like adulting shit and I have to deal with like you know the existential horrors of like oh am I going to like do something with my life am i going to you know am i going to be able to like pay the bills on time or am i going to you know like how where where you know will i see my like how, how do i see my future in the next 10 to 15 years blah 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 like once as an adult who has adulting problems and like has all of these like things to think about i i connect with this show a lot more in a second rewatch because i now connect with a lot of like the depression angles and like the existential crises and all this other stuff, because that's sort of, th- I mean, not to that extreme, you know, sense, but I still like those emotions connect with me a lot more as a, as, as an older person than I did when I was like 15. Like, hopefully what I'm saying like makes sense, but like it, it what I'm saying is it truly is like one of those, like now that I've seen this like more than once, like I, like I can fully like, express my like admiration and love for the show you know yeah i mean i feel like i I saw it i've seen it at the perfect time right after um you know like a few months after graduating high school and i'm like a a big adult man who has to like you know not pay the bills because i don't have like a house or anything or um but i've got to like you know have a job and whatnot and like try to take care of myself more than ever now so yeah yeah i think i I think i did see it at the perfect time at the perfect age where it really kind of really clicks with me Mm -hmm. yeah exactly but you only really get it like once you've matured and passed past the actual age of the characters because i mean as the, I mean, I, I hope we're moving into the bloody end of Ava by now. Yeah, we will, we will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm officially moving it right now. Cause All right, yeah, the go end ahead. Of Evangelion, I guess I can try my best to explain it. Um, but I have like a general. It's like, yeah. it's like the ultimate cosmic punishment for just like the most like over dramatized like most a hundred percent on steroids teenage emotions you could ever experience because like that's literally like what 
Shinji's whole arc is by the end of this film. And, like, it shows his, like, selfishness and kind... And this film kind of reveals how, like, how much Shinji, Shinji actually kind of affected the people around him, in a way. Um, but, like, but like Jules said earlier on in this episode, like, he is still very young and figuring out shit for his own, so you can't really fully blame him for it, you know? Like, he was forced into this, like, position, but also he does still have a lot to work on because this this movie kind of recontextualizes that he still did do some wrong. Like, there were still people around him that needed him just as much as he claims to need them, you know? And it's just, like, the ultimate, like teenage boy feelings like and the, like these kind of heightened feelings when you're like fuck the world kill reality everyone should die yeah. those types of thoughts are at your most heightened when you are a teenager it's like like mm. it's like when your parents are like oh you're just going through a phase and then when you're a teenager you're like it's not a phase, no i'm mom. not yeah, it's not a phase and then when mom. you grow up you're like holy fuck, I actually did go through that phase. Yeah, I was so you did. Yeah, yeah, cause everyone does. And like, that's pretty much the phase that Shinji is in, but it's on a phase, but it's like pumped up to the max where there's also like existential uh, dread uh, involved as well and cosmic war and, and all this other, all these other factors. And it ends with Shinji, I mean, pretty much in the exact same position at the start of the film he's just a disgusting snake snake well yeah like he, he jerks like, off to an unconscious just... osako it's like this is not a good person like let's be real, yeah. real with ourselves yeah. for a second yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's like and like and like that's the and like asuka at the end like she she like sorry i'm jumping straight to the end but like this whole movie yeah, is yeah, the go end, ahead. so yeah, <laughs> and she, like, has, like, this moment where she is finally, like, able to give him, like, physical, like, affirmation, something she's mm -hmm. been wanting to do this whole time, and, and, and Shinji is just there, back at, like, his internal thoughts of wanting to strangle the life out of her for not being there for him, and it's just, yeah. like, Oh mm -hmm. my goodness! And the the final words that you get oh. is just Asuka saying, disgusting. "Disgusting!" And like that's how it ends. Jesus and it's like, Christ! Oh it's devastating. My goodness! Yeah, it is haunting. Can and I... <laughs> everything that happens before is even more haunting. So, um, can I tell the story I, I, of you watching this film? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. In a sec, I just <laughs> yeah. I just want to yeah. uh, quickly re like give the audience like a little rundown of what this film is even though i've just splurted basically the end of ava um kind of follows the last remaining episodes of the show and it essentially um is the build-up and explanation for how the uh, inevitable third impact eventually happens like yeah. you see this this horrifying thing that all the characters have been fearing. Some of them have been wanting it to happen. Um, and pretty much the choice is left up to Shinji <laughs> to save in the entirety of humanity. Um, and he decides not to. Oh, he, well, he, he can't make well, a decision because he's too self, self in his own head about things. He's confused. He is... He it wants to blame the world, and his inability to make a decision causes his neglect on human. Um, oh, what's the word? Uh, informality or the human informal uh, the, the the human instrumentality yeah, project. Remember. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Thank you, Santi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for that. So he. He rejects that, and then they're like, okay, well, <laughs> here's the third impact, and then that happens, and then Shinji's like, oh, fuck, I don't think I actually wanted this to happen. So he kind of takes it all back, and then, like, Lilith and um, has been Pol unleashed Pol at this point. Pol 
And she's like, yo, bitch, okay, well, you've already kind of fucked up the world already, so now the soul, the souls have already left their bodies. They have to choose for themselves to um, go back to Earth, essentially. Um, and then it's, and then you have this news flash, Asuka obviously being incredibly, um, like, narcissistic, and not wanting to die, she decides to come back. Shinji obviously decides to come, uh, Shinji decides to come back, and then they have that final interaction on this world that they've essentially destroyed, and it is, like, it is so cosmically haunting. Um, See, I, I yeah. have a different, Take I have a away, different interpretation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jules, you get, I was just going to say I have a different interpretation of all that, but yeah, take it away, Jules. You go ahead first. I'll, I'll say my piece later. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just going to say that, like, how my experience of watching this was. So, like, um, my friend, my friend Henry, a uh, good friend uh, of the show, or who watches the show, um, he was watching Evangelion pretty much at the same time as me. He finished a little before me. And so we were both saving uh, End of Evangelion to watch together, which we did the other mm -hmm. day. And um, for some reason, we decided to bring out, like, the, the snacks. Like, we brought out, like, the chocolate. And we brought uh. out, like, the soft drinks to watch this movie like it was, like, fucking crank or something. <laughs> like, something yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then by the end of it, we were just like, god damn. That, that was, like, a, a horrible experience. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I have to say, like, it's... For, for every criticism I have of the show, like, I think it's just, like, completely, like, washed away here. Like, like it's such a well-done, just, like, really good, like, deconstruction of, like, not just, like, these, like, really, like, philosophical ideas, but, like, of just, like, kind of, like, movies and animated movies in, in general, like, in how they're yeah. done. Like, I think my favorite, mo my absolute favorite moment in the film is just, like, when it, like it switches to live action um out of like that was awesome nowhere, i much. i love that just, yeah like, i love those all these kind of people like living their lives like there's there's people in the theater i love that you can actually see like one guy doing like peace signs towards the camera no i saw that that was <laughs> funny I, I that was hilarious yeah <laughs> yeah but it's like it's such a it's just like it feels like the messaging is um is like pretty clear it's just like stuff about like just like you have to value value your life you have to um you have to be loved basically or just you have to be re realizing of the people around you who love you and care about you but and don't push that away and then um shinji basically does at the end and then he's just left like alone just uh after being called disgusting which is such a such a gut punch like after everything he's been through like he's like i i take it all back i take it all back and then the world's still destroyed and everything but and then he she just says disgusting and then you're just like oh man yeah i and it's like i i feel like there's a lot of like the way shinji is such a like a fascinating character to me because like <laughs> i feel like i see like a lot of people say like that's it seems the common criticism is like oh he's too he's he's a whiny little bitch um like he's too yes. annoying and i feel like he's such a he's such a perfect depiction of a teenager not only in like like the depression related stuff as well but like like the way it draws lines between like he's like he's having he's having such an existential crisis and is like um just like horrified um about it and it's like so sympathizable to like you're being a fucking whiny asshole like shut up um and i think the way the way you kind of blur between that is like it's well done in the show but it's so well done here where it's like and, any yeah moment, uh, like it's just you just feel like do i even like shinji anymore like oh yeah. wait, actually, like, wait no i don't yeah and, and it's especially like apparent in that moment where like misato literally has to drag shinji around like he is so like at his lowest point and so mopey that Misa literally has to like drag him around to get him to places um and she's like yelling at him just like look you have to do something you can't just sit there you know like if you can't just like curl up yeah. a, into a ball and die you know but it's like you can't it's, just get it's, up into the fetal position like yeah like just getting like, real like, shit going down yeah, it's like it's it's the meme. It's like get in the fucking robot. Gee, it's like I yeah, get in the fucking robot. 
Yeah, but it's like, but at the same time, it's it's like you said, I agree. Like, it's a half and half type situation where it's like, on the one hand, it's like, dude, people are dying. Like, get in the fucking robot and deal with this shit. But, at, but on the other hand, it's like, but I also get it. You know, it's like, he is, yeah. he didn't ask to be in this. Like, he was forced into this situation. Yeah, he and he like, he, and he's like, in such like a hellish just place at the moment. Like, yeah, and like if you think about like it. literally at the same time you're just like like get up and pick up like a gun or something, bro. Like we yeah. we ain't got time for this. Yeah, and like but you also think about like how like you know, like it's after everything he's gone through, it's like honestly, I would probably have done the same thing too. It's like after everything that has happened up until that point and on top of the fact that like this government agency is killing all the people you used to work with and like mowing down and taking over your fucking military base it's like yeah. i get it it's like it's traumatizing like i wouldn't want to do it i would just curl up in a ball and, and die like, too um, but at the that's a really funny line um what's the, the, the one soldier says where he's like nothing personal kid yeah <laughs> yeah i i line. fuck with that why that was really good yeah and it's yeah and it's it's so I love uh, this this idea was already basically hinted at in the show but I really love how it's so perfectly exampled uh, like ex exemplified in the in the sh in this movie and they basically say it anyway where it's like only humanity is capable of hating itself to this extent you know or they said something like that exactly. um yeah. And I love how, like, I mean, they already implied this anyway, but, like, the the line between Angel and humans are so blurry to the extent that, like, is there really a difference, you know? Because they Misato even says yeah, uh, that's where... Was able to yeah kind of go around undetected exactly yeah that's how a uh, koaru was able to get to and, oh my god uh, sorry i want to briefly talk about that moment i just to go back to that show and i fucking hate netflix for doing this so fucking much like they purposely changed oh god, that yeah. they changed that line from i love changed you shinji lines. to i like you shinji because of, to, i guess they just I don't it was worthy of your grace or something yeah, something like that, and it's like, were you that like yeah. anti-gay or some shit like that? It, it, and even then, that's not the point. The it's point crazy is homophobic. Yeah, that the point of that scene is that for the first time in Shinji's life, someone said that to him. Like he is surrounded by all yeah. these people who, it's like, such technically, a powerful, like, just like important moment in his. And they cut that. And in his they life. changed and they that. Changed like it. those fucking assholes. It's like Jesus Christ. It's like the reason why I that scene you, is so. Like mention, if someone, I would like if to someone mention, said, "I am worthy of your grace." That South African. Yeah. Netflix has the verbatim original show on it. So, based Lucky on bastard. Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, but it's don't like shit on my Netflix, okay? So you it's Netflix like you fucking assholes. It's like <laughs> it's it, it it is that scene is crucial though because it is the first time Shinji has ever felt love and warmth and like and it's what makes like his death all the more traumatizing because this is someone who genuinely cared for him and now he has to fucking kill him you know and that obvious and that and it, and it explains why you know Shinji's just moping around and not doing anything and not getting in the fucking robot because like he killed the one person who like who said that to him who like who actually like genuinely cared for his well-being and it, and they just changed it because because scared a gay or some shit i don't even know like in it, but even either way what it's i was going to mention change. earlier why would they do that i don't know like i really do not know like, but like anyway any other reason other than they just were homophobic yeah exactly and then they just changed other lines that they just made no fucking sense like why they, they did like, that they, like did in they the they changed the i'm so fucked up line to like yeah I'm, they did too they I'm changed so that too up. like in the in the netflix version of end of evangelion he says i'm the lowest of lows or something like that and it's like i get that like yeah. kind of gets the same point but like there's a difference between saying that and just saying i am so fucked up like the saying raw, that the raw kind of nature of i am like, so fucked up yeah, that hurt the like the the swear word and like the emphasis he puts into the swear like it 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 highlights the the emotional trauma and like feelings that he had and his guilt because again this is that he says that literally after he jerks it like in <laughs> to, to an unconscious Osaka you know and like but anyway what I was what I wanted to say in the end is I I I feel like I have a different interpretation on what happens in end of ava compared to you i i still totally agree with what you guys are saying but i feel like it's a bit more bittersweet in my eyes because 
I think of that moment where uh, the cosmic horror stuff happens and, you know, the abstractism is happening. I kind of view that as Shinji deciding, like, look, if I if I put myself in the human instrumentality project and I become part of this mega one mega soul, you know, technically all my problems would be fixed. I wouldn't be depressed anymore i wouldn't be sad anymore i would legitimately be happy and be you know free from all of my emotional baggage but i think he he instead what he instead chooses is he rejects that and he wants to return to humanity because they have this really interesting saying and this is what eventually gets gendo killed in the first place is you're so afraid of rejection and you're so afraid of people hating you that you immediately like block them off before they even give you the chance to do that. But it, and it's it, and they make make that comparison to like to AT fields, which are like the shields that protect the angels and the Avas from like getting hurt and stuff like that. Um, I love how Shinji's rational like justification for essentially coming back and becoming human again is like, like yes, I'm going to have the same emotional baggage and I'm going to be, have the same problems that I had earlier. But you know, part of what makes being human human is the is the connections you could make you know as like with friends and loved ones and stuff like that and i want to have that opportunity yeah good or bad like uh, the the, everyone makes it very clear that this is not some moral good bad white and black type situation It is a very grace type of phenomenon where it's like yes you could be rejected by the person you love you could be outcast by the person you love but like shinji's rationalization is that i would rather face that risk and try to live a better life and try to be a better person and try to live a happier life than like living in this like ignorant ignorance is bliss type like situation where he's like this mega soul um and it's why for me like he when with the after that you know live actions and and it's and, and i you brought up the live action scenes and i love those moments too because it's him like trying to rationalize it's almost like these pieces speaking where... to the camera like breaking character just just being like you in the audience like the way the way it actually focuses on like a people in an audience exactly yeah like he yeah he's speaking directly to the audience saying this is my justification this is how i'm feeling and you know and, and like even today like the reason why i love those like yeah it's such a catharsis yeah like those live action scenes like it's 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 those moments where we're in the movie, you know, where we can like, relate to like what's he's happening. Also, but the, 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 he's reaching the catharsis as well, like whatever whatever shit he's going through, like in his real life. Exactly, yeah, and it and it's it's why he makes that decision to return because he wants to be with people essentially. Like, yeah, like they they'll reject him uh, at some points. Maybe they'll not want to be with him, but like he would, he'd rather take that chance. And it's why I found that ending with Asuka so emotionally gut-wrenching and so powerful because like who knows how long he's been in this fucking hellscape like mad max level like like hellfire world you know like it's he who knows like how much time has passed you know but like clearly when so when when ritsu when uh ray and uh Ko kowaru give shinji and to an extent humanity this decision where it's like you have a choice you can either stay in this human instrumentality project where you're just one mega soul or you can come back as a human and try to live a better life and try to live a happier life because ua shinji's mom said it herself where it's like happiness can be found anywhere just as long as you like if you work for it if you can like make the effort to get it then happiness will be found anywhere like paradise can be anywhere you want just as long as you not only like put in the effort to make it happen but also be with people who will help you get to that point and so you know and, and for the longest time who knows how long shinji has been here but like he when he sees um the the, the ray like pop up and then disappear which is a, th a a reference to what happened in the first episode he like doesn't bat an eye but when he sees asuka like he's not sure if what he's looking at is real like because he he's been so isolated for so long and like luca mentioned he just picks right back up where he started where he he chokes uh asuka and he he's tr he tries to strangle her because she still symbolizes all this like rejection and hatred and um isolation 
that he's felt from from her for so long. But um, but but, you know, Asuka doesn't resist. She doesn't, you know, hit him. She doesn't call him, you know, names or whatever. She just lovingly like caresses him and wipes the tear from his eyes. And, you know, that's probably the most affectionate thing anyone has done for him since fucking God knows when. Um, and which is why he breaks down crying. And when I when I think about when Asuka says disgusting, you know, maybe he's ref she's referring to Shinji. It, it, it's not entirely. Sh I'm not entirely sure what she's referring to. But if you ask she's me, definitely referring. I to think Shinji. she's referring to Shinji. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. yeah, she is referring to Shinji most definitely. But I also, I I think my interpretation of that is that her feelings for Shinji are the same. Like she still finds him disgusting. She still finds him gross and pathetic or whatever. But she is willing. I don't think she honestly ever saw him that way a part of her yeah. arc is kind of like this it's kind of like like you were saying it's kind of like this um deconstruction of the trope of like oh when a girl's like teasing you it really means that she likes you because that is that is essentially what uh asuka or oh, asuka sorry um was doing like like that was essentially like a big part of her character like was that she felt these strong feelings towards Shinji, but she was never able to fully communicate that to him. And she thought that she was giving him enough signs for him to, like, um, uh, be compelled to her. But yeah. obviously Shinji being the afraid and uh, incel virgin, no, just, like, struggled with relationship and, like... Um, like type character he was that he never acted upon uh he never acted upon it so like and uh, in, in the deep crux I of <laughs> this show pretty much the main message is just communicate with the people you care about because yeah else exactly. shit is just gonna yeah go i don't down. think it's like, I, I think it's less like an incel -y type thing and more just like like you said it's about no, communication no, I, I because know, I was, no I, one I was just I, joking I, 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 was yeah. I was just joking when I said yeah, that no yeah one, no one that's the um, problem with everyone it's like no one knows how to fucking communicate to each other no one knows how to talk to each other especially shit like this you know because because I, I, going back to what I was saying before I I okay I was maybe I was being um I was being exaggerated when I said she calls him, she thinks he's pathetic, you know, loser, blah, 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 whatever. I, I thought of it, sure, I think that's a way to look at it, but it's also, you have to remember that, like, Asuka's biggest, uh, I mean, I guess one of her biggest vices is, or is her pride, you know, like, she she feels like a lesser compared to Shinji, you know, because they're always talking about how, like, she's always complaining, like, oh, Shinji will save the day. Shinji's so great. Shinji's so awesome. Shinji will do everything and everything, you know, and, and it's like, and, and that's, and, and I guess you can interpret it as her just doing Sundere bullshit, but it's also her kind of like venting her frustrations where it's like, I am so insignificant compared to you that I have to say these things to you to make myself feel better. But she doesn't. And when she says disgusting, I, I think my interpretation is she still has those feelings, but she's like Shinji in the sense like she wants to be a better person. She wants to be happy I, you know I, I that's cheesy to say but it is like she wants to be a better person she wants to live a happier life and so she's willing to make this effort to go i'm not gonna smack you i'm not gonna call you names i want to express just how much effort i'm going to put into this by like expressing now love and admiration and and care for you you know like i'm not gonna make a fuss or react or whatever by you strangling me i'm just i'm going to react with going back to the jesus imagery shit you know like i'm you know kiss on the cheek when you when someone punches i don't know i'm not like a bible person but like the whole like you know kiss someone on the cheek type thing and and once shinji gets this affection that he hasn't he's never really had you know he starts breaking down because so, because oscar's now like finally like treating him like a regular human being she's not like treating him like shit you know it's so it's like yeah i, I 
everything that you're saying, absolutely correct. And I think our, our, our theory, our interpretations aren't really conflicting. They're more just like parallel, you know, they're, they're all on the same wavelength. It's just like, there are certainly a lot of ways you can interpret this. You know, it, it is, you can see this as a hopeless, like, doom and gloom type situation because, you know, there's no indication to say that, like, they will survive, you know, like, because, like, the world's fucked, you know? Like, who knows if there's, like, any food or water or clean drinking water for them to survive, you know? Who knows, like, if there's any semblance of civilization left on Earth, you know? And, like, and and they even said it's, like, if if humanity was so willing to become human again and try their best to live their lives, you know, then, like, more people would have showed up and not just, like, Shinji and Asuka, you know, most people like to be comfortable. They like to be happy. They like to not be in any, any state of pain or emotional trauma. You know, they would prefer to be in these this huge mega soul of a of a of of a ball of bliss. You know, but like Shinji and Asuka make the efforts to say, you know what, I don't want that. You know, I actually want to live a life. I actually want to find some purpose in myself. You know, and in that sense, I find the ending to End of Evangelion like very bittersweet. It is fucked. It is traumatizing. It is awful. But at the same time, you can also interpret it as inspiring, hopeful. You know, a, a look into a better future type thing. You know. So I'm sorry for I am, going so I am long about that. To see that end. I, I totally see how you can see it that way, but for me personally, I am, I am unable to see that there is even a slight glimmer of hope uh, of hope after that ending. Like, for me... And that's fine. I totally complete, understand that, yeah. Complete despair. Uh, I guess Jules kind of talked about his experience watching the movie. I think I'll talk about mine as well. Um, watched it, thought it was great, and I literally could not sleep. I, I I could not sleep thinking about it. I think the third impact scene, which we haven't really got into, but it is truly yeah, I want to I want to just horrifying. Yeah, like, before we do though, I of space. Yeah, yeah. Before we do, I would like to get Stanty's thoughts on the ending as well because we haven't really heard a lot from him, and I would like to yeah get your thoughts on the ending as well. Yeah, I really loved End of Evangelion. I think. I think, like, all of your points are perfectly correct. I honestly could have said it better myself. Uh, the ending had me a bit skeptical, but then I thought more about it, and I was all like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense, you know? And I don't know if anybody... I, to me, I know, I know you said not to, like... Not, I, I, I know you said that, that we're not going to, like, discuss, like, those movies, but, like, the rebuild, like, Evangelion movies, like, delves more into... Don't spoil, because we've never... I've never seen any of these movies, and I would like to experience them for the first time at some point. Right, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Like, it perfectly, like, it perfectly yeah. expands yeah. on that series, so... Especially, like, after the third okay. impact or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this... End of Evangelion is quite the trip. It starts off as... Like, it starts off with these, like, wild and crazy events, and then not only does Nerve, like, you know, get blown to smithereens, but also, but no, but also the world gets blown up in the process just because of, like, Shinji's insecurity, and it's like, no, wait, go back! Like, it's like, uh, it's one of those memes, like, that, that's, that, that's like, fuck, go back, you know? <laughs> and, and... And yeah, I could also name another anime that uh, that kept me awake at night, and it's that, and it's the ending to 1997's Berserk. Specifically, I'm talking about the eclipse sequence. That's that's traumatizing uh, right there. Okay. Like, <laughs> I I've never seen the anime, but I've read the manga, and so but I I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yep, yep, yep. I don't think I really need to delve deep into it. It's just. Yeah, it's just that to, traumatizing, yeah. and um, and 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 uh, yeah, like I also really like the uh, the live action stuff with like the humans and all, and I like and the and of course and of course and of course like and, and of course like sure like everybody like you know most of mostly all these characters are dead, but I think but I guess that's kind of the point on how bleak 
this world is, really. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I also like that um, you mentioned the real life stuff because you, you, you get like the real world, what, but like no one's there, and it's kind of like a reflection to like this is what has been lost. You know, this is what has happened. This is what you've done. There is nothing. There is nothing left. Um, but yeah, as I was saying earlier. Um, so yeah, I, I was like up all night just having crazy nightmares because of the Im of the imagery in this film. Um, and then when I woke up the next morning, I watched it again. Oh, God. <laughs> I straight up just watched it again. <laughs> I watched the dub this time around, which was actually pretty good, honestly. I actually really fucked with the dub. Um, I've never seen the dub. I've never seen the dub of any of this stuff, so yeah, you'll have to inform me I, how that went. I, I think it's a good dub. I think it's a good dub. Um, I really like the voice acting in it. And obviously I can understand, uh, well, not, I can get a better feel of the tone of the voice acting um, with it being a dub. Um, being English and all. But yeah, and I, and yeah, like I think that's like, that third impact scene is just like it like it's prob like you know how I told you guys like after I watched After Sun I like watched the under pressure scene like a billion times. Yeah. Well I've I've watched that third impact scene a oh, billion God. times. I think the song that plays over it is absolutely perfect. I love how it is used in unison with the imagery that we are seeing. Um, the, What's the name of the song? Of, like, I I would I've been trying to find what the name of that song is, and I really would like to to listen to um, it at some point. It's it's so it's it has like a a Japanese name. I think it's called like com uh, sasa t o d m ten. Like can you just spell it? Like it? Can you just type this out for me? Because I, I I don't yeah, I don't yeah, know how to spell I'll, that. I'll yeah, type, I'll type yeah. it down. Yeah. Um, it is such a weird name for a song. It's like one of the 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 code things for the thing uh yeah but um yeah perfect song i love how that scene is orchestrated and edited together um that my favorite shot in all of eva is um when uh the the two lesbons kind of oh well let me let me explain this scene pretty much pretty much what is happening in this scene is that i mean it's the third impact everyone's soul is being extracted from their body and their AT fields are collapsing and they're all essentially turning into the, the Lilith orange. juice. Because... Everyone's turning into orange juice, yeah. Yeah, because like the, the, like the, um, their AT fields cannot handle the shit that's ha I don't know it's hard to explain but if you watch cosmic the movie, horror sense, shit um, yeah like like HP yeah, Lovecraft yeah. like <laughs> level of like ho yeah. cosmic horror type shit yeah like every everyone's yeah um so <laughs> yeah and as everyone is dying everyone is kind of seeing this last image of uh their most cherished person in their life so some of the people are seeing Misato, some people, most people are seeing Rei, some people are seeing, I don't know, just, just the most cherished person in their life. That one girl uh, gets, sees Ritsuko who hugs her before she becomes orange juice, yeah. And I and I love that. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just I got I gotta really point out that scene. I love that moment where like the scientist girl like tugs that one guy's like shoulder, and she asks him like, "Did we do the right thing?" And he's like, "I don't know." Like they don't even know if like if all of this was worth it. Like they don't even know if like if if what they achieved was like you know if it was all worth it at the end. Sorry. I yeah. Go ahead. anyway. Continue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This whole film is kind of like a twisted, like, Jurassic Park, like, this is what happens when you play play God, you know, like... Yeah. 
with like and, and I love how like spirits and godly beings and... exactly yeah and and it's like yeah. and, and I and it really goes to show like the people who are, are are part of this operation to defend humanity from the angels they're really just selfish beings who are like barely human you know because like the, the seal like board members are just like blocks they're just like you know they're like these like stone t I mean obviously they're just like avatars for like the actual committee which we we see event we see occasionally in the show like there's like these weird like goblin f figures or whatever so it's like these people who are tasked with protecting humanity do not give a single rat's ass about humanity they're, they're doing this purely out of selfish re reasons they want to be gods they want to be these like godly you know beings um and and they're just kind of like screwing humanity at the end because it's like for their own selfish reasons which is why like i find it so ironic that the motto for nerve is god's in his heaven all's right with the all's right with the world i just find that like the biggest slap in the face piece of irony ever you know because it's like they essentially view themselves as gods and they want to be gods um and obviously nothing is right in the world you know so but anyway yeah please continue luca i was interrupting you yeah no worries and like yeah so while you have this whole scene like i mean obviously the lyrics <laughs> directly i i'm i'm a sucker for when lyrics directly relate to the the shit that's happening on screen and it happens here like the lyrics are like it it all turns to nothing it it all just keeps tumbling down yeah. i keep letting myself down it all keeps tumbling down like like it's literally just the ultimate like cosmic punishment to the world it is literally like goodbye everything is gone um and, and that's it like that, 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 that like yeah um and then yeah you have this whole lilith is being born sequence and it's like ray as well like they have combine and shit and like yeah, it is just like completely haunting, mind bending stuff. I like yeah. this kind of cosmicness, like rarely. It's it's crazy, just like in the show, it's... you don't really feel like the full impact or just like how like horrifying. Oh, pardon, yeah. Pardon, um, how horrifying the third impact like is, but like here, you just get like the full like thing or it's just yeah like, literally oh my yeah you get all God. the context like, this is just like, like yeah you get all the context and then yeah you're like oh jesus christ yeah in the show they always talk about how like oh the second impact was this like catastrophe it like it almost it wiped out like half of humanity or, or whatever and you know you get glimpses into that like i there was one episode i forgot which one it was it was like they have like documentary footage or whatever of like a glimpse into what like the second impact looked like but you don't really get an exact feel on what that looks like until this movie where it's like oh this is some like cosmic horror type shit where it's like all right humanity earth is fucked you're done we're done here <laughs> you know and like everything goes to shit yeah it's it's and then i didn't think yeah you get that sorry <laughs> no it's just it's fine i i was almost done with my point i was just like it is so I, I yeah it's I cannot express how terrifying that is like this is for an anime that isn't labeled as horror this is seriously one of the scariest like like horror experiences I think I've ever had in an anime which is weird because anime isn't really known that, for um, being good at horror you know that frame that's the uh it's the banner on letterbox for the film where you just or it's like Lilith's face um like half face with just yeah like, her eye just oh, like, yeah. wide open that's one of the most terrifying like uh shots i've ever seen like legitimately yeah that honestly got what what got me interested in just watching like all of ava in general because i saw that and i was like what the fuck is this like i gotta gotta watch this to get the context of this and you know then i regretted it immediately after i finished a end of ava <laughs> but you know you know i got the context now the therapist and what this whole movie is a is like an endless therapy session like if you think about it it's like if if therapy is too expensive for you just finally, watch this movie like, permission to kill yourself don't afterwards. do not watch yeah. this if the therapy is yeah. the, I, I thought i was doing fine for a while until i watched this movie if you are mentally <laughs> unstable do not watch this movie do not watch this <laughs> yeah. movie 
Yeah, if you do no, not want not to have a, a bad day, I don't know if you do not want to have a about. if you do not want to have a bad day or maybe possibly multiple bad days, don't watch this movie. <laughs> I was joking about yeah, the therapy session thing. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> If you need a if you need if you need one out of 13 reasons why just watch End of Evangelion that's already enough uh, a reason to to do it <laughs> oh so God. yeah God. And then yeah um, like I think Timmy oh not Timmy <laughs> Shinji's um internal Shinji. like I am Shinji yeah that's me is, that's who I am is like more fleshed out in this film and like more comprehensive comprehensible and like meaningful and fucked up and twisted and yeah um i think it's just perfect and uh, like 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 that f um third impact scene is like the moment where the film become becomes so like perfect for me like i think yeah. it is just truly phenomenal filmmaking um yeah i love yeah, the like, um there's something something else i also like was like I don't know if you know if you know you might know this Timmy because you seem to have more knowledge on the film, but I don't know what the the budget or the specs of this thing was. But I kind of uh, I really like just how like how like the the cheapness looking of the animation sometimes like sometimes it just it just looked a bit different um, than other times, which I found which I found like to be very to be very interesting, and I and I quite I quite enjoyed actually. I think it gave more more purpose to some of the the film where it's like not every like there's a kind of collapsing reality like happening like everything is kind of like broken i guess you could say in a way yeah yeah i, I i'm looking this up we, and no one really talked about that yet no, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I think that's a good point to mention. Uh, I can't really find the exact budget, but apparently the estimates are around like 200 to 300 million dollar yen, uh, which in, in dollars, <laughs> that's dollars, like... That's like that's like a million, two million dollars, basically. So like uh, this show wow. didn't really have a high budget anyway. Like that's ba I mean, the 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 speculation is that the reason why the last two episodes of and of Evangelion happened is because like uh, Anno just like ran out of money. He only had like ten dollars left and he was like, fuck, I got to stretch this ten dollars for like all <laughs> it's worth. Um, and I don't know if that's I mean, Luca mentioned that like that's not true. I don't know who knows if that's true. Like but like either way, this show, this franchise as a whole didn't have a lot of money to spend, which is crazy because it's like it's one of the most iconic like anime series of all time. But but I totally agree with you. Like yeah, even before I wouldn't call it. Yeah, I wouldn't call the animation cheap, but it does have this like griminess to it. This like it, it like it's almost like there's like dirt, you know? Like it's like it has it like grimy gro in a good way. Yeah, like, it's it amateurish. Like, it feels if it feels amateurish but made by professionals. Yeah, exactly. Like I, that, that's a good like way to sum it up. It's like fucked up sketchbook, but like yeah, but what's like made by professionals. <laughs> like, fucked up sketchbook. Yeah. The, the edgy diary they they yeah. they 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 made a show based on an edgy diary oh man so yeah i oh man i been finding that in your kid's diary <laughs> did you guys see the uh did you guys look at the uh the reddit post that i sent in the group chat the my 12 year i found I this on my 12 year old's journal like of yeah <laughs> it's like yep that that more or less sums the plot so um yeah holy god like i i don't think i've ever been this traumatized watching an anime since like maybe perfect blue like i and i honestly like i do not know which one i like more because like perfect blue has been one of my favorites for the this longest one, time and like now the, this i mean obviously for you yeah but it's like man it's just they're both like just existentially terrifying in their own ways. I'm not trying to make comparisons or anything. It's just it, it reminded me a bit of like the feelings that I had while I was watching Perfect Blue, if that makes sense. Um, but holy god, it's I, I. But in the end, though, it's like this movie is just like I. I feel like we can talk all we want about it, but again, it's like it, I, I've ha I've said this before. We won't like be able to cover I, everything. So so yeah, we can't cover. Yeah, we can't it's cover everything. Yeah, and it's also two a.m. for you. But also, it's just like again, it's like it's what I've said before. It's like I feel like 
trying to analyze everything and trying to write down and say everything you could possibly say about en- End of Ava. It's like, it, it, it's just, I feel like that's just not what this movie is for. It's like, it's like I said, I... I'm I, what I care about most is the emotional experience that this movie provided me and it probably made me a really fucked up like emotional experience and I'll probably never ever be able to explain 100% in detail like everything I have to say about this movie and just the show in general but it's like but that but I'm fine with that I'm okay with that because in the end, what I'm going to take away from this show is, like, those pure, raw emotions that, like, Anno just so clearly wanted to express in this series and in this movie, you know? It's like, I'm not going to waste my time analyzing, like, oh, what does this mean? Or what does that mean? Or how much time has this passed in this moment? Or what is the greater meaning of that? Like, I don't know. I'm never going to fully know what the hell happens in either of these pieces of, of art. But I'm I'm okay with that, you know? Like, because I'm just fine with just, like, Oh, being with just like being okay with these are the emotions I'm feeling, and that is the thing that I'm going to take away from both of these like art forms, if that makes sense. Hopefully, what I'm saying makes sense, but I'm just like, I really want to communicate the emotional connection and drive I was having while watching Ava and End of Ava. So, but mm, yeah, yeah, so All right. uh, I feel. Yeah, we should just wrap this up. Yeah, does uh, Santi, do you have any final thoughts, or do you have any last things you want to say before we wrap things up? We said a lot, and I'm I'm very happy we said a lot. I did not expect. I expected this episode to be long, but I did not expect it to be two and a half hours long. So, so end of Evangelion. Beautiful, depressing as shit, and traumatizing. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. yeah. Good yeah. summation. Perfect way of summing it up. If you guys want, if you guys are looking for a great palate cleanser to this to this experience, I highly recommend uh, an anime called Fooly Cooly. It's spelled F L C L. Um and and it's and it's made by a lot of the same people who worked on Ava. So like I the director of the co-director of both this show and I'm sorry, this movie. And also like he directed a lot of episodes of the show. He made a series, he made a series. um, Yeah. Fully coolly. And I would argue it is just as deep as, 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 uh, as Ava, but it's like a complete, the complete opposite. Like that one's more spunk and energetic and just overall fun and won't make you sad. I mean, it'll probably make you a little sad, but it's like, it's more, it's more wacky. Yeah, it's more wacky and goofy if that it, then that's the best way I can describe it. And it's only 6 episodes long. It's very short. You could probably get through it like in an, in an, in an afternoon or something. So, um but yeah, it's a great palate cleanser if you if you need it. And I also highly recommend um Gurren Logan as well. Uh cuz that's another like yeah, that's another like Gainax produced like mecha anime, but that one's like if this is a subversion of mecha anime tropes, this is like a love letter slash like warm embrace of of mecha anime tropes, if that makes sense. So if you want a more like traditional mecha anime, like the Me- Gurren Logan is more what you're looking for. So but Yeah, and the and the and the person who uh who created uh Gurren Logan started Trigger, right? Because yeah, it's exactly yeah, like went, Trigger. A lot of the people who worked on this show, like, yeah, left to form Trigger. So you could argue it's more of a Trigger anime than a Gynex anime, but that, those are my just two cents. So, yeah. anyway, uh, both Evangelion and End of Evangelion are a 10 out of 10 for me. I think, the, like, End of Ava, especially, is like the easiest 10 out of 10 I've given in a very long time. <laughs> um, so, and yeah, I. I do not plan on rewatching this anytime soon. I am going to give myself like two to three years before I even so much as think about like watching this again. So, but uh, yeah, that's that. Um, I'd say Evangelion. I'd say Evangelion the show, probably a seven, and uh, end of Evangelion probably a nine. Show, show, um, nine out of ten few flaws but i still love it uh end of ava 10 out of 10 like, nice you can't fuck me up and like keep me awake the whole 
yeah, you can't keep me awake the whole night and like do that shit to me. That's just not allowed. You, that's just that's just fucking not allowed. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like the show is a 9.5 out of 10. Movie, 10 out of 10. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, well, speaking of um, <coughs> of um, palate cleansers that are going to make us uh, uh, feel good again. Uh, are we oh, just God. Go All right. Condition? Yeah, I might as well. It's probably too late <laughs> for questions anyway. Does. Yeah, I I I, 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 I guess it I, I right. Yeah, I, even I, even after all that, like I don't know if I have energy for the questions right now. Like that was a hefty discussion. Yeah, I think this is by far. I think the longest we've talked about a recommendation. I mean, to be fair, it, half of the recommendation was a show, but like that that was like we had. I think we have said more about End of Ava than I think uh, out of any movie, and that's including Tales from Earth Sea. So you know, there you go. I'm very proud of that. I'm glad I recommended both the best and the worst, longest discussions. So, wow. yeah, you know, well. very proud of myself. Yeah, Jules, go ahead. Yeah, my turn. So, yeah, yeah, your uh, turn. I'm recommending. Uh, Timmy already knows because he guessed correctly because I, I, I revealed a bit too much information. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I'm recommending two films. Uh, one is a um, one is a narrative film. Uh, it's in my top four, and one is a documentary. Oh, yeah. So the first one then. Oh, I know. So what the it first is one is. <laughs> yeah. 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 So the first one is Apocalypse Now, directed by Francis Ford it. Coppola from yep. 1979. And the second one is Hearts of Darkness, a filmmaker's apocalypse from 1991, which is the documentary about the making of the film. Yeah, which, uh, Jules, I, I do not know the director's names. I told you I needed something light and fun after this existential crisis of a recommendation, and you recommended the opposite of that. Well, I was looking at what my other, like... <laughs> picks are like in my in my list currently and i was like none of these are gonna be like light <laughs> at all could have just, you could have just done like crank or something and i would have been like yes please i need something like that <laughs> afterwards but okay fine let's yeah. let's do this yeah let's great do, yeah let's I... just do one of my favorite movies in my top four so yeah if you don't sure. want to be spoiled for well quick question um, i which it, i have so i've never seen this movie it's like a a, a blind spot for oh, me for yes. so long um, which which cut of the movie am i supposed to watch like i need a definitive answer to that okay so um the cut that we are going to be watching uh is the uh the theatrical cut which is two okay. hours 33 minutes <laughs> yeah the shortest one <laughs> technically yeah and this is considered the best version of the film right like um well the debate is between the debate is between the final cut and the theatrical cut um i okay. like i like yeah. the three cuts but the theatrical cut is really even the redux I've, I've connected with the most um so yeah that's the one we'll be okay. watching gotcha cool and there's and no like different the french plantation in the in any of the cuts you're watching, and then you know you're watching the wrong one. Okay, gotcha. And there's no like cut, weird like different cuts or whatever for Hearts of Darkness, right? There's only one version of the film. No, there's only one. So, okay, yeah. great. No, I, I the reason why I'm making this very clear. Normally, I wouldn't care about this sort of thing, and it's like kind of common yeah, sense. But like this has like so four different. Having, like, multiple yeah. Cuts. yeah, so like I just want to make clear like which version of the movie we're watching. Yeah. So okay, cool. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Say uh, the so thing, yeah, and then don't we can. Um, Apocalypse Now, directed by Francois Coppola. Watch it before the next um, uh, before the next episode comes out. And also, if you don't want to be spoiled for Hearts of Darkness, uh, don't go read Wikipedia. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for coming on the show, Santi. Um, yeah, nice, thank you so much. Nice do you have, with Do you, you have anything? Yeah, glad to anything talk anything about depressing plug, shit uh, with you guys. <laughs> Yeah, do you have anything you want to plug before we head out for the day? Absolutely. Uh, so you can listen to the Santi Time podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, my Instagram is Santi Time Pod. Uh, my letterbox is uh, is I always I always I always forget what it's called. Um, um, it's um, it's my letterbox is Straw Hat Santi. 
as like as a play on like you know the straw like, hat crew from One Piece. Piece, yeah, One Piece. yeah, and um, yeah, and, I got it. <laughs> and, you, and, and you could also look up Santi Buadib. You, you can find a picture of Paul Atreides right there, and uh, oh yeah, and uh, my Twitter is um, b r i o n underscore i a g o, and yeah, that's all I got. Well, yeah, make sure you leave um, awesome. your letterbox uh, link uh, in this group chat so that Luke and Jules can follow you um, on the platform. So I think I already follow Santi, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Luca, I think I do follow you. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, another day, another dollar. Uh, another one bites the dust. Uh, get fucked. Get on the fucking robot. Uh, yeah. Disgusting. Okay, I ended my recording.